Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm your host, Derek Whita. Joining me, as always, it's Owen. It's Owen. How you doing, Owen? Doing great. It's getting a little, it's getting a little late. It's late for me. You're an old timer. It's getting... It's, oh, oof, yeah. Yeah, that's... 8, 8.30? 8.30. Fucking 8, time for bed. 8.30 on a Friday night. Or the, oh, it's <laughs> Friday, too? That makes yeah. it even better. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. how old I am. Yeah. I love they didn't know what day it was, though. So it's actually good. It's a good sign. I, yeah. I know Literally one day. Friend. I have a one-day week, and it is trash day. <laughs> it's the only day that matters. It's trash day. Joining us today, we have a special guest, our friend, Ryan Bodenheimer. Cheers. How you doing, Ryan? Great, man. Yeah, Thanks no, for having me here. Cheers to you. Thanks for, uh, I say uh, aloha. Mahalo. Mahalo. To the Ninth Island. Maui. Yeah, the Ninth Island. Uh, Ryan nice. brought a case of beer from Hawaii. I'm drinking this big wave golden ale. It's very good. Yeah, I'm, I'm drinking the longboard. But yeah, apparently Las Vegas is the Ninth Island. I didn't know that. And I, you know, oh, yeah. That's what they call it. That's what uh, my buddy at the gym said. So... Yeah, it's so like the one here. place if you if you're if you're from Hawaii and you live live there, like yeah. one of the main places people travel to is Vegas. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then yeah. and then they come back home. Yeah. Hawaiian Airlines goes directly right from here to Oahu. Like, we yeah. we did that. The flight. biggest destination if you're leaving the island is yeah. Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man, um, when you talked about your trash day, I'll tell you. You want to you want you know some fucked up shit. I got I got a friend who's a serial entrepreneur. He can't fucking help himself. Who's this guy? Well, uh, you know it is what it is. You know, but um, he's he is one of those one of those types of people that just starts a business everywhere he goes uh -huh. and then never follows through and gets one going off the ground. Yep, I love him. Right, but he's working on a farm right now. <laughs> What kind of farm? They got fucking cows. I know that. You know, know how I know they got fucking cows because they got a fucking box of rotten fucking meat in my trash can right now. I'll tell you a story. So he's trying to make it like a, a meat delivery service. Yeah. Those are tough. Right? Like I've always wondered boxes. how. So his freezing technique, he's trying to get down and he asked if I could be his guinea pig. Okay. I was like, yeah, man, I didn't think about that. Or I'm just trying to be helpful. You know, right. I was like, yeah, dude, go ahead, send it. And he sent it on a Thursday and it was the Thursday before Memorial day weekend. So he sent a package of, of test frozen meat. And okay. he already has his, he already had his concerns that it would show up still frozen. So he sent me, it was, there was 10, um, pieces of meat and they were all in individual Ziploc bags. Okay. So he sent them on a Thursday and I didn't get them until Wednesday the following week. Oh shit. So it took a week to get it. Yeah. There's so no it, way that's still frozen. So it was fuck. Yeah. No, it was rotten as fuck. And yeah. I, and I got it at Wednesday at about 4 PM. My trash day is Wednesday and he comes in the morning. Yep. So I've had a oh, fucking nice. box of rotten meat Sitting just there. stick it, stinking it up. Cooking. And this past week, they came to get the trash. It could have been gone. It got stuck at the bottom of the oh. fucking trash can. So you're oh, too So I man. still have Come this on. fucking box of rotten meat. <laughs> Cooking. Because it's like 100 down there. He thinks it's funny. What? And he's like, I'll, I'll try again. I'm like, don't send me. Rotten meat. Why dude. is he sending it? Why is he sending it so it takes a week? Don't they usually well, he, overnight so he, that he, stuff? he did so like so I was his test. He was he took it to a UPS store oh, instead of the business hub. Got it. And it was Memorial Day weekend. Got it. And so got it's it. like, yeah, he learned, but you know, I'm He's, sitting here smelling fuck and my kids play outside. So it's <laughs> no like I laugh at a lot of things. This isn't one of the things that yeah. I laugh at. So yeah. Is he is he like raising his own cows? Or how deep is he into this thing? He his family um yeah they have their own cow so that's the thing it's like you get to know your fucking cow before oh, yeah. You, yeah before you kill it type thing you know yeah yeah and so like what do you, you know he's a really good guy with always good intentions and things like that but when you send me a box of rotten meat i get angry he needs you to like send you like a pack of beer or something or like yeah a, like, no he's a, like he's, a, he's, he's a cool like, guy he's a cool guy maybe you should do liquor delivery like i feel like that's a good <laughs> business to get yeah, into right now you right? know or, or, or so like cool. i asked him i was like that's hey, man, really like, hard we, to do we had like laws and stuff yeah like licensing and okay. between different states i actually yeah. looked into that did you we had yeah. of course yeah. you did right uh Another. yeah a couple yeah. weeks ago we talked about how owen has literally held every position in the, you know <laughs> like everything a man can do owen's done it um uh we we did we had butcher box here for a while that was a fun and i, I don't even give a fuck like our experience with them turned to shit yeah um we love i loved butcher box it was super convenient yep and then like the meat was really good yep 
And uh, it was expensive, but I, I pay for food. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I care about what I, you know. Um, but they, two times they sent us, um, so it, like in our in our monthly we would get six pounds of ground beef individually packaged two months in a row. Like three of those were just bad because the fucking package was cut. Okay. We didn't cut it. There's right. like, you can't cut that shit. There's so much installation. Like, yeah, I don't know how, oh. like, so like, and like and, almost like a razor blade had cut it, but it's too far down yeah, for someone to cut it opening. The yeah. Package, it had so. been cut on their end and like, so what, but you know what they're, you know, so we told them, it was like, Hey, you know, like I spent our, a couple hundred bucks on this. Yeah, like, and you know what? On. They're fucking like the way they handled us was. They said they would give us twenty five dollars off of our next purchase, and I was like, "Yeah, fuck you." And the like, way we do our customer service, if there's a problem, it's like here's all your money back, and here's right. a free fucking uh you know pro, like yeah. over you know yep. it's like you give me like your shit is a hundred fucking forty dollars a month, and we love you. We are on your team, yep. and it would take a lot for us to complain because we're not complainers, but it's like, Hey, ah, this one has to be brought up. Can, okay. you know, this is too, hey, go ahead and replace all that fucking meat at the minimum. Right. They, and they offered 25 bucks. And I told Stacy, I was like, cancel it. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck maybe, that. Maybe Fuck that buddy. customer service. And you know, what's bullshit. If I would have, so Stacy was the one who reached out to him. If, if I would have reached out to him, it would have been different. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like when people treat, you know, treat yeah. everybody like you would treat somebody that you want something from. Right. Maybe. You know, like treat everybody this, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. And when Maybe your buddy's got a, you know, good business to start. If Butcher Box is messing it up, you can yeah. step in, take that business. Oh, no, it's know? great. I fucking, so, I wish yeah. him all the luck in the world and I want him to succeed. Is he a veteran? He is. Oh, nice. It is, he's, he's Shout cool. out to veteran entrepreneurs, man. Yeah. No, he, yeah. It, like he's the, sh- but just like, but don't like find a different guinea pig. <laughs> please because hey if he wants to send if he wants to send me meat as test i'll totally accept all right i'll I'll give him your address do it and you can work with him on that i don't care if it sits in my trash can and rots like i'll 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 take the risk yeah do you have your do you keep your trash can inside your garage or outside outside yeah well it stinks up the whole fucking neighborhood yeah i don't know how people put because we have we have kids still in diapers there's no way i'm putting diapers and trash cans in my garage yeah Let's get this fucking show kicked off. Let's start with a slapper. Let's do it. I'm ready for the slapper. I gotta get like here's here's I've been waiting to do this one. This is one of my favorite bands. These guys are fucking awesome. They're from Australia. The Australian metal scene is good. It's very good. <laughs> this band is called Aversions Crown. And there's this one song. I like a lot of their songs. There's this one song that I like in particular. I don't know if I'm gonna say it right because they they do weird shit. They like sing songs about aliens and stuff like that. It's really weird. Uh, but it, the song is called Cycles of Heru Specs off their album Xenocide. <laughs> Dude, some like, but this is but, like, this is fucking good music, man. Or like, it's, it's good metal. But Xenocide it's, it's, sounds, sounds like some Scientology shit. D- the, dude, this is what they fucking, they write about weird sci-fi yeah. Like so, but it, it doesn't matter what the lyrics are because you can't fucking understand that motherfucker, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> like he's one of those guys. He's one of those metal vocalists that okay. you can't understand. But it's just like when the voice is an instrument, his is. Right. You know, and like, but so though it's cool. Uh, so the band is a Virgin's Crown. Um, the slappers cycles of Harrisbecks off the album Xenocide. But on uh, 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 other other songs I like of theirs is uh, Hollow Planet, Conqueror, Overseer. Are these like go to get it done in the gym? Big time. Hollow Planet. Uh, Hollow Planet um, off the album Tyrants has, has been one of my go tos since 2016, since I lived in El Paso. I remember at the CrossFit gym I trained at there, yeah. there was a speaker up up uh, on the ceiling. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I would climb. Either me or my friend Billy would climb up the fucking uh, pull up rig and we'd stand on it and we would plug into the speaker auxiliary cord <laughs> and just blast that shit. Like just blast metal in this gym. So this CrossFit gym was like two separate rooms with a little doorway. Okay. And the class was out in the main room and right. I would train in the back right. by myself. And it would just be like, we plugged into that fucking speaker and we blasted that shit. So yeah, it, it reminds me of, of training then. And then that, that's actually where I met Stacy. And so we trained in that back room together and we fucking nice. made her. Stacy uh, in the metal as well? No. No, is she now? 
No. She, you never you never convinced no. her? No, never. but yeah. <laughs> she but she, 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 hasn't, she hasn't convinced me to like country. <laughs> so, yeah. No. So, uh the cool thing like these guys they um they, they they also lift. Like a lot of these guys are big into like ollie lifting type shit yeah. and you have to listen to like um the drummer. It's, it's fucking ridiculous how fast this fucking guy drums. His name's Jaden. He's really cool. It's fucking it's talent. Yeah. And then um Is it weird that I trust people more that lift weights? Like the fact that he said it, he just kind of like, kind of like, okay, I'll I'll like, oh, your music's probably good. Yeah. I mean, I do. I I have, I have a weird lipness test. I know, but I don't know. I can get over it. I don't know. I can get over it. But like when like a lot of metal bands, they talk about like overcoming adversity and fighting through, you know, struggle and things like that. But then when they, but like they, they write that song and sing it. And then in their personal life, they're just fucking nasty, lazy people. Yeah. They're they're skinny. They play video games. They're, you know, is like, hey, hey, live the life. <laughs> yeah. Live the life or shut the fuck up, you know? Yeah. Um, so these guys live the life. And, and, and uh, I became, I've become good friends with uh, one of the guitarists, Mick, Mick Jeffrey, Mick Jeffries, something like that. I'm fucking Australians, you know? <laughs> I like I like his uh, something like that. I like his. Well, I can't remember if it's Jeffrey or Jeff. Oh, you got know, it. But his name's Mick. Um, I like his stories. I'm not going to share them, but he's got some good stories about what he did on tour in the United States. He had a good time. Oh yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. And I can respect for that. Him. His yeah. stories as a dude, I'm like, fuck yeah, man. Live that life, dude. Quick side st- uh, side story there. It's Australians and Americans. I feel like we just have this bond. Like, so Australia would send over a fighter pilot and then we would send a fighter pilot over to Australia. And for whatever reason, those guys were just awesome. Like, I feel like they just were down to earth. They understood that you need to be good at your job, but don't take yourself too seriously. Mm-hmm. You know, like enjoy the moment. Like, uh, they'd have like big beards and so their, their regs were different than ours. So they'd be flying fighter jets here in America. So looking way cooler. Beards, yeah, looking like <laughs> awesome, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but I was just like, guys, come on. Like the beard, the beard doesn't like take away from you being a fighter pilot. Let's all do however we let's all, let's have a beard if it makes you happy you know and that's how australia is that's how the air force is they're really good at their job but they're like yeah dude have a beard go ahead yeah. you know we went to their uh an anzac day ceremony yeah. here mm-hmm. yeah stacy's got stacy worked with some australians one in particular his name's butcher mm-hmm. cool dude that's a fucking cool name yeah i don't i don't know if i don't know like all i know is butcher and I don't know if it's butcher in Australia, right? Because I'm like, hey, there's a silent hey, R in there. Is, is this is this is this word butcher? Is that butcher? Right. Because what did you do to get that? Right. How do you get call that? sign? Is that oh, yeah. it's his call sign? Yeah, it was his, it's his call sign. Every all you fucking okay. Okay, so let let let's we'll do this quick. Ryan. Ryan What's is up? our guest today. Ryan is our friend from Las Vegas. I met you a few years ago because you were flying airplanes out of Nellis. Um, you were a pilot in the Air Force, and your call sign was. Neo. How'd you get that call sign? Oh, man. So the rule is you can't tell the story unless you're drinking beer. So luckily we're, we're drinking, drinking beer. beer. Is that drinking a rule? Beer. Is that yeah, a like real rule? rule? It is a rule. The yeah. air, uh, the there, there's weird rules. Air Force yeah. is like, you know, they, they have so few problems. They can make up these like, ways of yeah, like, but Air Force rules. is like deep history and tradition. You guys got a lot of fucking weird rules. Dude, there is, yeah. there is weird okay. rules. But I don't know. The beer thing might have gone away. I mean, nowadays it's becoming more PC, right? Yeah. But, Back in the day, there were roll calls so like after Does World PC War II. PC stands for pussy cunts, or yeah, yeah I think so. so. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, way more pussy cunt. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so back yeah. in the day, they'd have roll calls where they. Uh, so now, now they have roll calls, but they've been dumbed down. They've been, you know, kind of stripped down a little bit. But back in the day, like after a, a, a mission in World War II, you know, you're flying over Germany or whatever, they do a roll call to see who made it. Like, okay, who who got shot down? Who's dead? Who's here? And so they've kind of, nowadays they do roll calls, but it's obviously, you know, nobody's getting shot down nowadays. You know? Yeah. I mean, obviously you lose pilots, so there's still that heritage and that history there where yeah. you, you respect who's fallen, but at like roll calls, you'll typically name people. So you'll kind of have like a roll call, you'll kind of gather the squadron together and you'll have a big naming. So it's like the mob gets together and comes up with a call sign for you. So usually yeah. it's something embarrassing that you did right because yeah. they're trying to keep your ego in check well which, I, i've been to a naming you know, I, I respect that <laughs> I, 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 hey drippy oh dick. you've been to a name i've been to a yeah. naming and i'm responsible <laughs> for a great name what was it well i want uh i um all right i'll, I'll, I'll so I, I went to a name stacy because stacy um she's intel but she kind of got like an honorary call sign and she still goes by this call yeah, sign. that's normal um and and uh i was just everybody was in there in their uniforms and shit like that and i was just in the back drinking beer in my city clothes and I have my fucking 
stupid Viking haircut, my long beard at the time, you know, <laughs> which is just fucking dumbass in the back. And the medic was getting a call sign. And uh, I put in, uh, or everybody put in, you know, you, 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 um, the way these things work, everybody, su- a couple of people suggest some call signs and then everybody votes on it or something right. like that. And right. I just, I suggested Z Pack. Cause I thought that was funny. Cause like when, when you get chlamydia, you get a Z pack, you know? Yeah. And in the infantry, everybody had been on a Z pack a couple of times. So I thought, you know, a z- zithromycin, that's what yeah. you get when you get fucking chlamydia, yeah. you know? And so like the medic, you know, I was oh, like, dude, I said Z pack. And, and that actually became his call sign. Long story short, like that. So like this guy is out there in the world. And, and he's like, I'm z pack I was like, why do people call you z pack I was like, because some fucking one-legged piece of shit was some at my fucking naming, and I never fucking met this infantry guy. Man. But here's what, here's <laughs> the Air Force. Everybody was like, what's a z pack I'm like, God, you guys don't even fuck. <laughs> he's got even... Derek's name on, like, on a list of people yeah, to kill somewhere, right. you know? He's like crossing yeah. off the lipstick. You, know, he's like... you know how I know people in the Air Force don't fucking have sex? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what a z pack is. Right? Yeah. You guys have boring yeah. lives, really. Now, what, like... what, what, what was your call sign? Yeah, so, uh, dude, when I when I first got to my first fighter squadron, I was stoked, right? Because I just went through, like, I don't know, two and a half years of training. So I was finally like, all right, sweet, I'm good to, I get to play in the game, you know? I'm in a combat fighter squadron. This is awesome. So when I walked in, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an excited dude. You know, I, I don't really, like, hide yeah. that. You know, I wear my, yeah. wear my heart in a sleeve. Yeah. So I walked in, and I was like, hey, what's up, guys? Hey, what's what's up? How's it going? You know, I, I think yeah. I came across a little too excited. Sure. And they said, dude, you sounded just like Keanu Reeves. Yeah, they're like you. You sounded like I Keanu wondered. Reeves, I wondered it was like if a little bit too over the top, and I was like, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> they they were gonna. So you got me. Neo not because you're pale and white, but because you came off as <laughs> <laughs> as the yeah. Keanu, yeah, yeah. No. as the one. Yeah, yeah. so. Although, yeah. <laughs> I came across <laughs> as the one, the one. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I was always that guy that was like, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Why don't we try this? They're like, dude, you're, you're always like questioning everything, man. It's like, you're trying to break out of the matrix. Right. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it's me, dude. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm proud of that. So you that, know? So that kind of stuck. Yeah. That was one part. And so the, the thing with fighter pilot call signs is there has to be duplicity. So there needs to be a couple meanings behind them. Okay. Yeah. So if you ask anybody, typically if you ask any fighter pot, there'll be a couple meetings. So if they tell you one, you could be like, bullshit, dude. What's the other What's one? What's the other one? Yeah. It's like meeting the fucking uh, the sniper at the bar all the time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is how you tell who's the real. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the other meaning. So the other one. So usually one of the meetings is like flying related because they want it to come back to being a fighter pilot. So, and they want it to be something <gasps> stupid that you did. Again, trying to keep your ego in check, right? Yeah. Stupid when I was at here. this naming, the stories I heard were fucking amazing. Right. Yeah, like the great. dumbass shit a lot of these people have done. Yeah. And then they get named. Right. Yeah, for that, it sticks with you like, for life, man. Like you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> early on yeah. in your fighter pilot yeah. career or your, like if, if, whatever, if you, you if you find like, a guy and he's like, Hey, what's up? I'm bear. And you're like, yeah. wait, why is that your fucking, you? yeah. And it's just like this weird elaborate story yeah. about how he got fucking drunk one time. And <laughs> yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. So what's your other? Yeah. Yeah. No. So I'll try not to talk in my hands, but anyway, I was going out my first ACM sortie with, which stands for air combat maneuvers. So it's two okay. versus one. Yeah. So essentially like if you're flying out of North Korea or something like that, you're going to have a wingman with you. So if you go in and do a mission coming home, there's going to be not just one of you. There's going to be two of you. So you got to learn how to operate with another aircraft. So, but it's complicated as hell. Like I just got, keep in mind, I had just got out of like an advanced training school and then they're throwing you in this like national treasure, $60 million jet. They're like, yeah, good luck. Yeah. And there's another wingman with you, another $60 million national treasure. There's four of you, two of you are new. And then, then there's a bad guy. Yeah. Go. Yeah. And so I'm flying. It's like somewhere over uh, the Atlantic ocean outside of North Carolina and it's blue sky and blue water. Okay. I'm not trying to make excuses. Yeah. So I know oh, <laughs> blue sky, blue water, right? Yeah. Like hard to see different, dark different, blue, different hues. I mean, totally yeah. different yeah. colors yeah. of blue. I if mean, you're asking me, heart. yeah, it's sure, like yeah. more of a pastel sky. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, I wouldn't have water. a hard time determining the, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Very hard to tell or very hard to tell the difference for me at the time, <laughs> probably because I was an idiot and I was a brand new pilot. Right. <laughs> So uh, we're flying along and yeah, fucking dumbass, yeah, fucking, fucking dumbass can't even go upside down or around and do fucking barrel rolls. No, I'll tell you, no, I can't. Yeah. That's probably the problem yeah. <laughs> because again, it goes back to always trying to think differently, right? Okay. Always trying to do something new. Oh, are you out there doing barrel rolls? I was everybody's flying straight. <laughs> yeah. and Ryan's like, fuck it, yeah, fuck it, yeah. Okay. So we're fly- <laughs> the two of us. I was are, inverted. Dude, the yeah. two of us are flying in, and yeah. we get on the radar. We see the bad guy, right? Yeah. And so I look down my radar. I'm like. Pfft. 
I got this. I got this guy. No big deal. So I'm doing some radar stuff. I'm talking to my Wizzo in the back, you know, like goose in the back seat. I'm like, oh, dude, we're going to, we got this. This is going to be awesome. Don't worry about it. You know, I'm already planning like my celebration speech in the bar afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like I'm going to make yeah. this work, you know? Right. And I look down at my radar and I look back up to, we're getting close now. And I'm, tr and I, I had seen the guy outside of the, the canopy, but now I can't because, you know, dark blue water. Oh, right. Light hued, blue. light hued sky. Right. Yeah. yeah. Dark painted stripe eagle. Are you upside down and you don't know? Not yet. So <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. So I can't see him. And we're getting close. I'm like, and like you could hit, obviously run into somebody, right? Like, yeah. you know, it's a big sky, but at the same time, these yeah. jets are like 50 feet. They're, they're big jets, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, uh, where do I go? I know that he was level with me. So I'm going to go up and upside down so I can try to see him. <laughs> <laughs> so I go up and I go upside down and I I'm looking out my out of my canopy like this <laughs> try down at the ground <laughs> trying to see him and yeah. I'm just like you know this will work out well I'll be able to see him you know I'm an out of the box <laughs> thinker I yeah because yeah, I'm like no one else would have done this you know no one else in my peer group had the like you know the problem solving skills to do this so in my yeah. head I'm like this is super smart I'm gonna get you know I'm gonna get a, a clap for this one and so I look down and I see the bad guy jet go. Like just right past, <laughs> right past me, <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, he didn't kill me. Yeah, what do I but, do but now?" He, he certainly closed but that distance. He closed right? that yeah. distance really <laughs> quick, and my my whole plan to like go upside down, find him, turn and kill him didn't work. So we get down later, and the instructor's like, "So tell me about that maneuver." <laughs> yeah, walk us through your process. Uh, yeah. yeah, where did you read that? And I'm like, "Oh no, I didn't read it. Here, I was doing this, this, and that." Yeah. And that's when I learned the the viable lesson of just you know, yeah. It's like, Shut hey, up. Dude, we got four moves here. Yeah. That's it. We got four fucking yeah. moves. If you can yeah. do those moves right, yeah. you're going to win a fight. Exactly. If you make <laughs> something up, you're going to die. Just because Tom Cruise did upside it. Upside down. Yeah. And just looking stupid. Yeah. Well, but it, but so. there are times to do that, but not when you're brand new. Sure. Right? Yeah. So anyway, the yeah. not eyes open. Neo. Neo. Yeah. Not eyes open. <laughs> so he's like, dude, if you were eyes open, you wouldn't have had to gone upside down and do this like massive top gun maneuver. You could have just killed the guy. Not so. eyes open. Is that is that a literal thing, or does that mean like he he thought that no. I that I my eyes were closed? So he was like basically saying uh, if you, to do something like that, you had to just literally close your eyes and be like, ah, <laughs> yeah, let's uh, see what happens. All right. all right, so that's Neo. So that's that's Ryan, and it's Bodenheimer, right? It is. Yeah, Bo Ryan Neo Bodenheimer. He's our friend from Las Vegas. If you haven't picked up yet, it's fighter pilot, Air Force type. Sorry. Very fucking cool. I met you. I think I, I think I've known you like three years now or something like I that. I think so. Yeah, last yeah. time we hung out, we did a, a podcast together. Remember, it was never released. It was like recorded, and then oh, somebody. Oh, like, did they not like, release that? Oh, well, I think they deemed it like inappropriate, is my guess, because we were oh. <laughs> we were we were saying well, fuck and well, this you know, is I, I yeah. Know. Well, this is gonna get released. I promise this, you. Okay, yeah, and, you can, and, then, and you no, can say like, fuck. We're not. We're not. Fuck? We're not okay. pussy cunts. Right. No PC behavior here. You know. Say what you want. You know what? And I'm I'm very strong on that. I do not like there's a lot of people out there who fucking complain about the pc culture of america but then behave according to mm. pc culture they conform but they have to for their business right or they they have to because they choose to mm -hmm. they only feel like they have to there's always a choice you can always say fuck ass dick shit pussy fart <laughs> true and then release that and pay your rent at the same fucking time. So I promise you this podcast will get released no matter what you say. Love it. You can uh, you, you you call me whatever you want. Awesome. This is Ryan Neil Bodenheimer. He was a pilot. It was cool. Let's get to know you, Ryan. Yeah. Let's get, let's, let's get to know you a little bit better. And, uh, you know, where are you from? Man, that's an uh, interesting question. I, military brat. Grew up all over, man. So uh, born in Georgia, raised in Colorado. Moved all around the world. My dad was a pilot. Oh, no shit. So, Air yeah. Force pilot? He was. Fighter yeah. pilot? He was a fighter pilot, too, yeah. I had that, like, you know, rebellious side that was like, there's no way in hell I'm going to be a fighter pilot. So that was... <laughs> yeah, Fuck you, how, Dad. How I'm going to do what I want. You know? Except I'm going to do exactly yeah. what you did. Exactly. But I'm going to yeah. be better. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, so I was on my way to do... Pff, I don't know what I was going to do. I was going to, like go try to play, like, walk onto a D2 college and, like, be a tackling dummy on the football team for a few years. And then 9-11 happened, and I was like... Oh, really? Yeah, I think it happened when I was a junior in high school, and, you know, like... Oh, wait, how old are you? How old are you? I'm 35. Hey, we're the same age, oh, so that right. makes sense. Are you 35 yeah. now? Mm -hmm. Well, oh. I will be this year. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, they say the 30s are your best years, by the way, and you look great. 
Oh, thanks, be, man. Yeah, are you exfoliating? Dude, I fuck no. I, I, I use... <laughs> what's your skin, that. What's your skin like, care actually, routine? Yeah, actually, I got using... this much left. <laughs> you know, I put an order in for five bottles not long ago. I got yeah. this much left in my last one. I'm like, oh, shit, oh, danger nice. close. Yeah. I got half okay. a bottle um, left. Awesome. But thanks. You look yeah, good, man. too. Like, thanks, I, man. I haven't seen you with your hair so long. I know. And it's Dude, I'm fitting. trying it out. It's my first time since leaving the Air Force. I'm growing it out, so it feels good. So you grew up all over the place. In, in with a military dad. Yeah. Um, Dude, the thing that I, I don't know if this is a lot of people's experience, probably not. My dad was super laid back in the military, so I got to see him. One of the good ones? I think so. I mean, yeah. just, you know, I only know, you know, what I, what I kind of heard other people say in passing as a little kid, kind of, you know, yeah. just listening. But I feel like he was the guy that just was like, don't take yourself too seriously, but be really good at your job, and let's try to have some fun yeah. while, we're, while we're here. And I got to see that him kind of like be, be really good at his job and be respected while not being a dick. Yeah. So I think that rubbed off on me to try to recreate something like that. But, but yeah, I, I wasn't planning on going to the military, man, but nine 11 hit. I was like, Oh, you know, Holy shit. My friends are going to the army, the Marines. Like, you know, I was like, that's awesome. No offense to you guys. Like, I was like, that's cool. But I want to, I was like, I don't want to get dirty. I don't want to get dirty. Like, like, I just got a dude, fucking Manny Petty. I want HBO can everywhere I, I go. I want can air I, conditioning. Yeah, like, I want, can I, and the Air Force is like, we got you covered, dog. Hey, yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. like yeah. air conditioning? So, we got you. Yeah. So, you do. And, and they have the better fighter jets. No, I mean, so, anyway, I was like, you know what? Jets are cool. I've been around them. I can remember this moment when I was a little kid. I was standing on the flight line in Alaska, and there was this, like, four ship of F-16s. They took off in... I think like two by two. So two next to each other taking off like these big ass afterburners. I mean, after a little kid seeing that, that's, like, that's loud as st- fuck. Loud as fuck and just cool. Yeah. yeah. Like the sun setting, dude, it was like a scene from Top Gun. I was like, okay. Yeah. And I watched Top Gun. So that was in there somewhere. I've still never you know? seen Top Gun. In what? Its Come on, man. I don't, I think it's a fucking stupid movie, dude. Well, it might, it may be, but you, dude, it might iconic. be now. It's like, iconic, so, man. I mean, I saw it when I was a lot little kid you, though. Like, so it was yeah. like, yeah. I saw what bro. you know. You know who's I don't, new. Like I don't know. There's a lot of iconic things, I've, and I've True. never seen the Sandlot. But you're watching Space Force, and in, you're not watching. Top yeah, Gun? I've never seen the Sandlot in one sitting in its entirety. Really? really? Yeah, dude, that's on huh. constant rotation. My kids love that. So that's Stacy's favorite movie, and yeah. I just fucking I've never I've never seen the Goonies. What, dude? Mm-hmm. American classic. Yeah, but I bet well. I've seen a lot of fucking porn that you haven't seen, and yeah. that you probably should see. <laughs> probably makes you probably happy, quit man. watching fucking Top Gun. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy, dude. Check out this video I found today. <laughs> Look at yeah. this. Okay. There's no, probably some Top Gun yeah. named uh, videos right, on yeah. that. That's right, something. Yeah. What would it be called? Uh, um, <laughs> at, so uh, you know, like I, I when I, I do remember when I was I was really young, my cousin. I think he's like my second cousin or something like that. He was a Thunderbird pilot, and yeah. we went to his air shows. And then in my baby box. You know, I have a baby box, and there's a picture in there of the Thunderbirds. I've had that since, like, I swear to God, like, 88 or 89 or something like that. Nice. And so when I look, like, my whole life, I just see yeah. these. Yeah, so. So it was it, in your head when you were a little kid, It too. never made me want to be a fu- I was a huge pussy as a kid. I didn't, I couldn't even stomach a roller coaster, man. That's so, I was cr- never, so crazy I was to me, man, because like, now, I mean, you're, like, crushing it in the gym. Like, when yeah, did that well, transition happen? Well, the Army taught me how to not be a fucking pussy yeah. about it. I still get queasy, but I'm like, nobody fucking. No, no, like, no. no, actually, I, like, yeah. I just I don't care anymore because when once you accept your death, <laughs> yeah, right, life's exactly. pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, everything. But else so you're just like, oh, I, I'll go do nine eleven happen. So yeah. that that's what sparked because dude, nine eleven happened, and I was I, I think I was a junior as well. I was either a sophomore or junior. I remember nine eleven didn't make me give a shit hmm. about anything. I did not come from a family that was like patriotic. Or something like that, you know. Yeah, um, makes sense. I mean, it just happened, and I didn't know. I didn't even know. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. Actually, I was high on ketamine that day. Yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, I, I don't, I and mean, that's probably most most kids, right? Yeah. Like, I, I think I was fortunate because I was the kids that I was surrounding myself with were badass dudes, probably way more badass than me. Like, both of those guys that went into the one went into the army, went into the marines. They're on the SWAT team now. You know, oh, like yeah. they were badass dudes, so they they had priorities and they all kind of wanted to make something of themselves so i feel like i kind of saw that happening like i'd love to say like oh yeah i saw it and i you know just i decided to do it on my own no my friends were doing it and so i was in a good group of friends good group of kids that you know i was like wow i I see that they're going to try to contribute and i was a little patriotic man i mean i was grateful for what i had i grew up in like 
upper middle class Colorado Springs at the time. Oh, and okay. you know, so yeah. I, you know, I, and I saw jets flying over all the time, dude. It was yeah. like inception. I mean, See, it was I like, just didn't have, I didn't, I yeah, didn't have that at all. Not, like, not we a lot of lower, kids do. Lower, lower kids do lower economic class and things it's like that. It's interesting way. I, I, I was in the army when nine 11 happened and I, it, it was interesting to, to think back about it right now. Like we went in overnight from being able to just drive on post with no ID yeah. and just complete open bases to like that whole next couple months, there were like machine gun nests yeah. set up on the <laughs> fucking street. Quick, We've right? been yeah. attacked. So that, that sprung yeah. into action. What made you yeah. so, okay. So that's, so you're like, you've been around that stuff and you're like, I want to be a fighter pilot. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was an athlete, so I was playing. Yeah. Fo- I was playing all the sports: football, you know, baseball, track. Just track, just track a sport. No, dude, track fuck yeah! I mean, it's not. I it is. It is. It is. It is. It's hard. It, dude, it's it does hard, not man. get the respect it deserves. Because, like, doesn't. dude, I used to think that shit was fucking stupid as fuck. But know. you know what turns out to be? You know what was stupid as fuck? Ditching school, drinking, <laughs> smoking, and smoking playing the guitar, weed. and being sad all the time. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Turns out true, I should have been doing track. <laughs> turns out I should have been fucking running that whole <laughs> goddamn <laughs> time. Well, yeah, I think it's no, just doing different cool, things, yeah. right? Doing yeah. different athletic things. Brandon competition. Allen. Yeah. Brandon was talking about that, right? Yeah. Brandon Allen was mm-hmm. saying, you yeah. know, go away from the competition for a while. Yeah. Do something different. Play some handball or basketball yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So that's that's Dude, why. Dude, fuck track. no. Fuck no. Don't ever play handball. Have you actually ever played handball? No. It <laughs> fucking hurts. Yeah. I've played, played like racquetball. Yeah, but like, but have you? Yeah, but play handball. Dude, Fuck that. I do don't it. like my hand. I don't. Do you, have you ever played handball? I think I think I played a little. I don't know if I played. If you haven't, if you would know if you've played real handball. Yeah, because that, you can't just walk on to handball. I mean, you're you're hitting you're hitting the <laughs> little rubber ball with your hand handball. against the against the wall. Yeah. there's a line mm-hmm. on the wall. Yeah, we used to play you've that. Slap, like racquetball. You slap the shit out of it with a real handball and everything. Yeah, dude, that shit. Fuck that. It hurts. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't sound fun. No. Like, it just doesn't sound like. Doesn't hurt me. Time. I got hands of steel. Well, now, and so in, in high, instead of instead of doing track, yeah. instead of playing football in high school, I used to uh, ditch high school, yeah. and I would go to the community center with my friend Travis, and we would go in the racquetball courts. And instead of playing racquetball, he would stand at one end, <laughs> and I would stand at the other, and we would try to score goals by hitting that person's wall. But really, we were just hitting. The, the person at each other as hard as we could. <laughs> oh, man. Which can, sounds like fun too. It's like yeah. dueling. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, we were supposed to be in school at the time, but that's what I did. I yeah. got a better idea. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So why did you join the army then? I mean, I don't, this isn't. I, every, are I, you the only one asking questions? Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. I don't. I'm not here to talk about me. That's fair. I'm that's here fair. to talk about you. I want to know about you later. I, I, I'll, later. I'll tell you. I joined the army. Um. It was. Um, no good. It was what I wanted to do. Yeah. At the time there was really there. Like I can't, I can't pinpoint a certain, there wasn't shit for me, man. I wasn't doing well. Um, actually I, I had started working out. Um, you know, I had a high school sweetheart type thing and I had my first real run in with suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, my parents took me to a psychologist and he told me to start exercising (laughs) just to sort of like deal with my shit, you know? And so I was working out. That's actually, that's awesome. I feel like that's rare advice, right? Super, like nowadays it's Dude, like, I, hey, and I, take we've, this, we've like, told this Adderall story. And, we've told really cool, this man. story yeah. a few times. Okay. And I, like at the time, I, or no, I'm saying, I'm telling you at the time I was like, what a dumb, I was like, what a dumb fucking thing to say. Hmm. This guy is, you know, he just tells me to go exercise. Yeah. But, you know, that's what he told me to do. You Imagine know? what it would happen if he told you to like paint your feelings or something like that. Like yeah. your life could be on a completely yeah. different Trajectory. Actually, Imagine actually if doctors just gave that advice now though. Yeah. Like, hey, he was yeah. instead of the pills, like, first for, start with exercise. For real. Just said, go exercise. And then I had no <laughs> guidance from there. And I just started shit on my own. You know, I was doing dumbass stuff. But I was running to the Maplewood Community Center mm-hmm. in Minnesota and, and exercising and things like that. And I just started doing that. That became my cool. fucking thing. It became my outlet. And, that's and, awesome. and I threw and I th- that's what led me to the military is all of a sudden I went from this fucking dude that couldn't commit, had no fucking goals, no self-respect, you know, no discipline. Um, and then I was just working out, started watching movies about the army and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah. So you watch army movies, but no Top Gun. Oh uh, yeah. Black, I see. Black Hawk Down. We were soldiers. That's a good movie too. Uh, but we were soldiers. Oh, that's a great. We movie. were soldiers is the one. best fucking military movie. I will fight. I will fight anybody. Like what? Mel Gibson. Yeah, it's we were amazing, soldiers. Man. Is so good, man. It's so good. 
It's so good. It's what good. do you what do you categorize it as top? Are you based makes off the me story? cry the most? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, like, but I, I joined the army because I just wanted to. I wanted to. I just you know I just wanted to do better. Yeah, personal. It was a personal thing. It had, yeah, well, I, that, didn't, that, I didn't. I didn't know what it meant to be a patriot. I didn't know. I had no fucking idea what it meant to serve yeah. or to even give a shit about somebody else. Those those things weren't instilled in me mm-hmm. in my house. It was kind of like where it was my parents are good people, but they're like, "Hey, be nice to people." But, you know. Well, that's cool, man. I mean, it was that one little like spark that that, yeah. that dude said, "Go work out." That yeah. was the one little spark, right? You had something somewhere inside of you, but yeah. without that little spark, yeah. never would have happened. So, yeah. Do you feel like you're doing that little spark? Like, do you think about that now? You're like, "Oh, I could give that little spark to someone else," or is that not come into your head like when you're when you're creating your workout programs or you know whatever it is that you're doing i um once in a while i rem- or you know i don't i don't like me enough to sit there and stop and think about that it's like oh what impact am i having on people yeah, i don't yeah, think yeah. about that i just know or i said it you know i'm looking at this picture of this uh tough mutter up there uh, after i did that tough mutter uh a lot of, that's when people started writing me and telling me that i'm you know i'm an inspiration and that i've inspired them to do better and things like that mm-hmm. and i just don't believe i don't i don't like myself enough to ever think that i could have that kind of impact on a person but i accepted this a long time ago it doesn't matter how i feel right <laughs> right <laughs> it's not, yeah. right like exactly. like like you know and that's yeah. and that's actually something i tell if somebody's like having a down day and they tell me of uh, all the things they don't like about themselves i'm like hey here's what i like about you and maybe right now, just believe me and yeah. don't believe yourself. Yeah, yeah. You can lie to yourself. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, yeah. Well, I think if you got caught up in, oh, what impact am I making? Then you're going to like, completely yeah. lose people no. and you're not going to yeah. be relatable. Yeah. But, like, I mean, I'll just say, like, even before we became buddies, like, I'd see your Instagram and I'd see you crushing a workout. And I'd be like, fuck, man, I'm a piece of shit. I didn't work out for the past week. It was, it was actually while I was yeah. flying fighter jets. And I was like, dude, this is important to me. I, yeah. I should be working out. Here's Derek, you know working out with one leg like what what excuse do i have yeah so it 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 matters but i i think that's only the only way that the only reason it works the only reason why you're able to do it is because you're not like thinking about it right no it is it's it's the army uh it's the be no do of leadership be no do be no do all i gotta do is fucking all i gotta do is live right and and show right living but it's a responsibility for me yeah so that's yeah it's awesome so so i so when i joined i went fucking uncommitted infantry I didn't know fuck all about the military. Right. Um, you decided to become a fighter pilot. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I just thought it sounded cool. I had seen fighter jets fly around and <laughs> I was like, I loved adrenaline. You know, I love playing sports. I was into snowboarding, skiing and things like that. So yeah, I was like, okay, this could be an adrenaline filled career path and I could serve my country. You have a lot cool. of, a lot of hurdles. Cause everyone is like, I'm going to be a fighter pilot. And then the way I understand it is there's there's kind of like like you you make it to a certain level and you're like no you're going to be this kind of pilot and yeah then you graduate to the next one so yeah for sure I mean again it's kind of like saying like I'm going to be an astronaut like you can you know it's it's a cool goal but like then you, you get to <laughs> yeah. a certain point and you're like okay bro you're, you're going to be an astronaut like, I can't, yeah like, I can't <laughs> like you got kids man yeah. like that's the kind of shit that comes to mind you're going to be an astronaut <laughs> you know, like, okay. yeah I mean I think I think it's like pick something cool and then try for it. And then if you don't get that thing, that's ridiculously awesome. There's probably some cool stops along the way. Oh yeah, for sure. So I kind of had, you know, in the back of my head, I, I don't know if I thought that as a, as a, you know, dumb teenager who was like, uh, I'm going to be a fighter pilot no matter what. Right. Um, but, but you know, I had seen it too. I'd, I'd been around it and I'd seen that it was possible. So, I mean, if anybody out there wants to be a fighter pilot, I would say, try it, like give so, it a shot. Hold on. So how did, so I didn't know that. So how does it work? So it's like you, you join the air force. You're like, I want to be a pilot. Yeah. And then you start at like general pilot training and then how good you do kind of determines you can't, you can't just like walk into the crew's office, be like, I want to be a fighter pilot and you get a fighter pilot contract. No, you can't get a fighter pilot contract. So the fu- you have to be you become fighter qualified like halfway through pilot training when they realize you're not going to hit the airplane next to you when you're flying in close formation. That's good. That's when you decide to. That's when they're like, okay, we'll trust this person to be a fighter pilot. So you can. Is walk it in hard to not hit the airplane next to you? At, <laughs> at first, dude. At first, it's cr- like <laughs> yeah. honestly. When I first, I look back to f- when I first started flying, and I'm like, how did I learn how to do this? Like it was so weird. Because you're sitting in this little capsule, 
the thing that was the craziest for me was the sound. So you 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 have headphones on, and general aviation is it's not that big of a deal. There's not that many people talking, so find like a little Cessna around. It's not that big of a deal. You hear like one or two people, and you're like, okay, whatever. But when you're in a military environment, like a tactical environment, dude, it's it's 10, 15 people trying to talk over the radio at the same time. Really? And you're trying to control this aircraft and maintain airspeed and altitude. So for me, that blew my mind. I, I It took me a long time so early on. So much shit going on. And you have yeah. to listen and you see to listen up and think. And process what people are saying. At the same time. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. so I was like, we, we, we say this all the time. I was listening to the Jocko podcast recently and he had, uh, um, is it is it David? Burke, do you guys know? Yeah, that yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so he was he was talking. So he was a uh, he was an instructor at Top Gun, which is a oh, Navy cool. school, right? Yeah, that is a Navy school. Yeah, they send yeah. some Air Force guys there too. I think. Yeah, yeah that's so actually, like so uh, on uh, Jocko's podcast, he recently had um, the guy who was like the first commander of oh, Top cool. Gun, and he was it was a cool interview. That's cool. And he was fucking shitting on the Air Force. Was he? Uh, <laughs> <dog> <laughs> he's <just> jealous, <laughs> man. <laughs> he's just jealous. Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. If I I don't have a dog yeah. in this fight, you yeah. know what I mean? But um anyways, um uh so so David Burke was an instructor at Top Gun and that's what that's one of the things that's how they would test um these guys. It's like they're flying and doing their missions and he would say something. Yeah. And if they didn't respond, he would know that they're not yeah. listening and looking and thinking and flying yeah. all at the same time. You guys got to do a fuck ton. So It's a lot. And what I would yeah. say to David David Burke was his name. I believe so. Okay. I should confirm I would, this. So you, you tell yeah. me what you're going to say. And, well, I would just say like, you know, there's a healthy rivalry there, right? Like we, we got to have a healthy rivalry because it drives everybody further, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you, if you just say, oh yeah, you're good. No one's going to try to do better to try to be better than the other team. But oh, like I to be clear, the, David Burke, uh, he's, he's uh, not the original Top Gun. Okay. Yeah, the original Top Gun commander was 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 shitting on the Air Force a little bit, oh. but like it was oh, in a friendly it, way. He's it. like, because okay. you guys had the fluid four technique or something like that. He was trying to bring back dogfighting nice. when the military was trying to move away from dogfighting, saying the dogfighting days are oh, over. Yeah, and things like, like that. Take the so gun off to, of the off yeah, of the jets mm-hmm, and stuff. Yeah. Dude, when I think of all these, yeah, old Dave th- Burke. Dave Burke was Dave the Burke. recent guest. He was a Top Gun. Okay. Here's here's like, dude. Uh, I just like this story is funny. Like, of all the nice things I say to Jack, I'll tell you this: he could not fucking follow along with Dave Burke's explanation <laughs> of what training was like. So, yeah. um, they were talking about um this this uh, Top Gun, which is a fighter pilot school. Yeah, it's like a it's like the capstone school yeah. of being a fighter pilot uh-huh. for the Navy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, for the yeah. <laughs> for the <laughs> navy. Yeah. What's the Air Force is? It's called weapons school. It's here it's here oh, at Nellis. Oh, yeah, dude, that shit's so hard as fuck, but a lot yeah. of people go through weapons school, not just like fighter pilots. Right. Cuz even I think it might be the same north. for the navy. I don't know, people, but I think well, they, no, people up north go to Yeah, they have everything. They have like, like you can go to yeah. weapons school for like a UAV, a Reaper, yeah, okay. yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, um so Jocko was asking about you're talking with your hands. It's dangerous. No, this is this is no. I talk. You with have my to hands when you're talking about airplanes because so, everybody does asking, this. He, he was <laughs> like, he was like, he was like, hey, run me through like the first test. You throw yeah. these recruits in and things yeah. like that. And he's like, okay. So one of the first things we do is a one on one. Okay, and you're the student and you're the defender, mm-hmm. and you're in front, mm-hmm. and I'm the instructor and I'm the aggressor and I'm behind you. Yeah, and your job as the student, the defender, is to close this distance. Mm-hmm. And Jocko could not follow. <laughs> I mean, they, a lot of pilots dude, can't follow. They man. just got yeah. it was it was it was so confusing. Yeah. It, like it was so confused. I was getting confused, yeah. and I was like, "It's called defensive. Hold on, yeah. basic fighter maneuvers." So yeah. the whole point is you're trying to not get killed. So yeah. you're trying to react appropriately. Like if someone shoots a missile at you, yeah. then you need to flare on time, or you yeah, need yeah. to shoot out chaff on time, All or whatever. Sorts of crazy you know? shit. Yeah, but it was yeah. funny. Like he could not. Fu- like some some people are meant to be grunts, man. <laughs> you know, some people are meant yeah. to be pilots. Yeah, yeah. Right, dude. Yeah. You know, we, we so need us all. We need everybody, yeah. right? So but, so you're a pilot. You got a million fucking things going on in training, and you yeah. uh, they tell you you're good enough. Yeah. to be a fighter pilot. Yeah, so you go through it's like a year process to get to that point where you get selected to go really? be a fighter pilot. I got I got uh, a, I got fortunate enough. I mean, I worked hard to get this, but I got I went to a school that was made for you to become a fighter pilot. Okay, it was it was called Euro NATO Joint Jet Pilot Training, and so they send you there, and you get you get uh, to work with NATO countries. So there's like Italians, Germans, Norwegians, and yeah, they throw you in. They see how you do. So 
you do six months of a basic trainer, which is like a T6 or T37 or something like that. And then once you pass that, they kind of know they're kind of like, okay, does this person have what it takes to be a fighter pilot? And if you do, you'll go on to T38s. If not, they might kind of like throw you to like a C130 or something like that or a C5. Just, you know, they're not trying to lose you as a pilot, but they're trying to set you up for success. And, then, you know, they don't want you to kill yourself or hurt yeah. somebody. Mm-hmm. So you go to T38s. Uh, that's another six month process. So I started that. Um, dude, actually uh, lost a buddy of mine in week week three of t-38s so t-38s is like a jet aircraft like an airframe like or something yeah. yeah it's the, it's like a fighter trainer so it looks like a mini fighter jet oh, okay essentially okay. so it's the first time you're doing like low to the ground really like uh, fast okay. operations uh you're doing you, you do some supersonic training and you start doing like close to each other training and you do instruments they're like flying in the clouds and stuff because they want to make sure when you're flying a 60 million dollar fighter jet yeah. that you're able to fly through weather and land and stuff like that yeah. so and so yeah. you lost a friend in training. I lost a buddy in training, man. I mean, it was uh, it was week three, uh, and and we're all learning how to land these 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 are supersonic jets. You know, they don't some some countries use them as combat jets. They they adapted them. They called them the F five, but these are T thirty eights. And so it it it's a hard jet to fly. It's got like little skinny wings. It's it's not incredibly forgiving if you make mistakes in it. So you learn how to land it single engine and things like that. Mm. So some fighter jets, like once you get up to the bigger fighter jets, you can get out of a lot of situations, man, it's with funny, power. Dude. It's yeah. funny. Like, you know, when I became an amputee, they started me off on like the shittiest leg there was. And they were just huh. like, if you can fucking learn to walk well in this, yeah. when we give you that nice shit, you're going to be good to go, man. Right. Yeah. And That's so now stuff, people, compliment, people compliment me on how well I'm able to walk. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's like, oh, it, it took a lot of hard work. To get here, most people don't accomplish that because it takes a lot of hard work and things like that. Makes me right. think of that. Like they make yeah. you fly the shit because they're like, "Hey, if you can fucking nail this, yeah, when we give you that nice modern shit, yeah, it's it gonna be easier. it's gonna be smooth sailing. You can like think about uh, more things. Yeah, you're not even thinking about flying anymore. Right? Yeah, exactly. So. The flying gets easier but, for sure. Yeah. So uh, anyway, they're learn they're trying to come in and land single engine. Uh, the the engine that they were using, the the good engine it failed on short final to the runway and they, they tried to eject uh, the seats in those things are old. So the, the, the newer seats I think are better. So they've installed new ejection seats in some of these planes. Some of them they haven't, but in, in modern fighter jets, like an F 15 or F 16, their seats can work like with a sink rate. So you could be going towards the ground and still live. But these T 38, they're the, you can't eject with any type of sink rate. That makes sense. You have to be going up because if you're sinking, it doesn't have like the power to get you up to. You're okay. still to falling survive. down yeah. as you're. As, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. it makes sense. So if you ejected at altitude, you'd be fine. Right. If you're like a thousand feet above right. you or something and you were right side up. Right. If you were like sideways and you're 50 feet above the ground, like it's probably not going to work, man. You know what right. I mean? So it's a big risk you're taking. It's probably the most risky flying that you'll do because you don't know what you're doing you know and and it's it's the jet's not as capable so anyway they were coming in and um the seats didn't work properly long story short they ended up hitting the ground with their chutes kind of half open so i come in and i land and i see this oh um, fuck. I'm, I'm, i was in the pattern and i saw the big plume of smoke and like it's just like black like acrid smoke you know it's a jet crash yep. so my stomach just instantly goes because i had kind of heard from a we, we got like a brief from a fire department that comes and rescues us and they're like yeah we you know we come right away because we can see the black acrid smoke and that had kind of like stuck in my head for some reason and so when i saw that i was like oh no like that's i know it was my group my group of my flight that was flying at that time right so i'm just like okay you know they made it out they made it out we're good so i come in and i land and we're doing what's called an aero break so you're just kind of trying to slow down the jet with the with the holding your nose wheel off and so you kind of have a big, you have a view kind of like to the sides of you. And I, I go past that area and that jet is just, you know, wreckage with flames. And I saw um, the instructor from the backseat just laying there and, and like, just, you know, he was almost decapitated just to be, you know, yeah. honest. And it, it like stuck with me. So it was so such a strong moment where, I, you know, after that, I almost wanted to quit. It was like this moment of like, dude, I just saw this guy, you know, guy that I knew that I talk with every day got real real fast uh, it got real real fast you know and, and i know that there's other you know career fields out there where that has happened to folks too but i mean there was there was a good month where i wanted to quit um, that's interesting that you didn't um 
consider that beforehand. Yeah, it is right. Like to because me, it was for, all sex, for, drugs, but and actually, rock and roll. but but actually, it was um, actually. I think yours is the normal response. I got in trouble because I expected shit like that, and I said, yeah. and I and I wasn't um, as considerate as some people needed me to be when when people got injured or killed in Iraq right away. Yeah, and I was just like, wait, yeah, or like you know, for me. If you join the military, you are joining and accepting yeah. that people are gonna fucking die and get hurt. That's a that's, that's awesome the, that you felt that way. What, right, but what what gave you that insight to know like it that's the my right understanding be, of war. Like, you know? Right. And it doesn't mean that I but don't it's glamorized, you know, now. Right. But like but I was like that's the thing, man. Or actually, so I'll tell you, I got um when I showed up to Iraq, I showed up to uh I, I volunteered I, I, I got assigned to first battalion. Um, first three, two, five and second three, two, five was in Iraq and they had been taking some casualties. So they needed volunteers to come fill some slots. So they were taking like nine or 11 volunteers from first battalion. My, my name was the first one on that motherfucking list. As soon as I got over there, I was, it was like, I got, I think I got assigned, uh, I, I got assigned a weapon squad, but somebody had just been killed hmm. and, and I, and, um, and I was like, I'm going to go make a phone call. You know, I didn't. Um, and they're like, phones are down. Mm-hmm. Like, why are the phones down? And they're like, well, they got to notify the family. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But, and I was like, all right. And I just asked nonchalantly. I was like, I was like, how long, you know, like how long is, is, are the phones going to be down? And they were fucking pissed off about that. Cause they were grieving. Yeah. And it was like, <sighs> yeah, it's like standard practice of someone crashes or right. dies. And I wasn't yeah. trying to be like disrespectful or cold hearted or something like that, but it's like. But it, yeah. it, 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 you had that a, a lot of resilience people, somehow, but, but a lot of awesome. people get fucked up because it's like, do not, do not volunteer for yeah. combat yeah. because you part, you, you, people are going to die. Yeah. People, and you're going to see some fucked up shit and it fucks a lot of people up. And it's interesting yeah. because it's goddamn volunteer military. Right. I, exactly. <laughs> Which, you know, it was and like, so it, dude, that's cool that you, it f- doesn't mean that I am not, you know, I think about my friends who have, I've had, I've, I've, plenty of friends who have died yeah and i you know, i get a little bit emotional on that but then i check myself i'm like nah they want to see you living right dude oh absolutely and then yeah. when i and then maybe it helped me you know i got shot and i never yeah. so i don't understand survive i don't understand what well, do you think that was part of your ability to re- i mean i know you face challenges every day man like it's not life isn't easy peasy but do you think that, that was a part of your ability to recover and do so well like that you had that attitude it's just that I just accepted it. I was like, yeah, yeah, probably. I was never, yeah, I never felt. I, I hit my bad time when they kicked me out of the military. That's right. when I fucking gave up, you know? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, shit. But at no point, you know, I, it makes sense. Like, it, it, the guy who shot me, like, he was doing exactly what I would have done. Right. <laughs> you right. Know? Yeah. Like, we it wasn't were personal. Yeah, right? yeah, we're at war. But, yeah. and so there's a lot of, um, I, like, complaining isn't the right word, but. Just like um, people struggle with that. It's yeah. interesting that yeah. you join voluntarily to be a fighter pilot, and then when somebody that you know dies, yeah, and I know this it guy, it just through. shakes your, it just shakes your shit. It, it shakes does. your world. Yeah, I mean, but I'll tell you, I have a very interesting relationship with death. Yeah, I really do. I I created an interesting relationship with death, but I didn't have one at the time. Yeah. Well, and it's, I think, it's also your first experience having, yeah. having, yeah. So yeah. I, that's your I, first experience. I pictured that, combat I when yeah. I go to Afghanistan and, you know, over there, I've, I was like, yeah, maybe there's a chance over there. Absolutely. That some of us could die or whatever. Yeah. But there was never in my mind at that young of an age, that early that I was right out of college. I was like, seven months out of college this hey, guy, you don't think training so is, how old yeah, does training. that how old does that make you like 23 24 or something yeah, i think i was like 20 22 or 23 yeah yeah and so but this guy had gone to we had gone to the same rtc detachment you know as a buddy of mine so i think that that added to it at an early age but it was a gut check moment you're yeah. right it was this moment where i was like okay do i you know do i get really sad and quit and like i i think i felt that way for a couple of weeks a few members of our flight you know were coming they came to me and they're like you know i want to quit i want to give up so I kind of took some, took a few days, thought about it. And then I was like, you know, do I want to, do I want my story to be, yeah, I had this really tough moment happen to me and I gave up and I quit. Yeah. That's, you know, you know th- like for me, it's like, Hey, you, you like that guy? He's your friend. Yeah. I don't care what you believe. Just like imagine he's looking at you yeah. from above. It's a great Does way to he look at want it. you to fucking quit. Right. Does he want you to fucking quit and be yeah. all fucking sappy and sulky? No, no. He wants to see you fucking 
like just win shit. Like, go do well. Go, go live do well. Yeah. That's what I don't understand. Yeah. Like I under, like survivor's guilt is just a psychological fucking trick our brain pr- oh yeah. brain plays on us. And that's 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 the like that hangs a lot of people up. It does. Survivor's it does, guilt in and the I, military. But it's like and it, but it just can be combated with this one idea. Like, you can apply pre- to pretend they're looking down on you. Yeah. And you 100% pretend you are the one who died and you're looking down at your friends. Do you want to see them sitting around fucking crying, drinking all the time and quitting at life? Or Pretty do you want to, you know, at or do you want yeah. to see them doing well? Well, it's like, like ah, shit, I owe it to you, man. Yeah, man. Because you're fucking, you're, you're fucking dead, dude. Like, That's you can't do I this felt. shit. So, yeah. yeah. The guy, this guy that passed away, he would have been a like a badass fighter pilot. I could, I, he was just one of those go-getter type guys. So I felt that same way. I was like, okay. Like, in a weird way, like, the baton has been passed. Like, yeah. I'm going to do this for I us now. This guy. Like, we're, like, I'm going to be a, a badass fighter pilot, and then, like, I'll represent that guy's memory really well, Yeah, you know? And I became really good, close friends with his family, and so that was something that was important to me. Uh, but I think that you can apply that to everyday life, too, right? If, if someone in high school loses a friend to whatever, I mean, yeah. suicide, you know, an accident, car accident, whatever, and then they start to get depressed and they get down on themselves, they don't, they don't do that exercise that you just talked about where they put themselves in they flip the tables and they hope that everyone else doesn't do what they're doing yeah right yeah so i mean i don't know is that just a resilience thing is that just something that you know you how do you how do you well now they know that now they know yeah we just said it and they can think about it i don't know how the fuck i learned it hopefully hopefully they do but like that's my thing you know and it, it it makes it um because because bad shit happens. Bad shit happens. You don't have That's to be like a, a fucking. You don't have to be in fighter pilot school in the air force for bad shit to happen. Yeah. Oh in no! Life. Right. And then and you know, dude, I heard this parable the other day that you might like. It's called the second arrow. I think it was like my Buddha or something. But basically, okay, the first arrow is the bad shit that happens to you. Right. That's the first arrow. Does that? Does it suck to get? If you're walking through the, down the street, you get hit by oh, an arrow. My dick. Yeah. You get <laughs> you hit. Just got shot. Yeah. With dick dude, with an arrow. Does that suck? <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. That sucks. And if anyone says it doesn't suck. They're full of shit. They're not being authentic, right? Okay, but then let's keep going with that scenario. You get shot with another arrow in, in your in your leg. Now does that suck more? Yes, it sucks 200% more, right? So the second arrow is you being down on yourself and saying like, so, oh, poor me, poor me. So you just know? accept the fact that you're going to get shot with 100 arrows in life. Yeah. And be okay. Don't with add that. to the arrows. So it's don't, like, oh, don't shit. keep adding them yeah. mentally. It's like, hey, okay. Like, hey, oh, that's number 57. Yeah. Here we Can't go. wait for 58 because you know what's yeah, coming. That's things true like too. That. But, yeah. But it's like, so you're you're saying don't add. Don't add to don't it. Make, if, don't make more problems. I was right. thinking about use that. Use it for fuel. Use, use that. Neg- you can flip that negativity and use it for rocket fuel. Kind of like what I did with my buddy is I told my flight members, I was like, look, we can go out and, and and do something awesome that represents that person well instead of quitting. Yeah. So anyway, I was everybody I, stayed in. We all we all stayed in. Nobody quit after that incident. So that's good. good. That's yeah. good. Um, that I was and I was you know that parable is interesting because I think about um, it's like what do we do? What do I do? I want to make people believe in themselves. Right. Why? Mm-hmm. Because there's enough things to get in your way. Like life is going to come at you. Yeah. Don't be one of the things that gets in your <laughs> That's awesome. way. Yeah. You know, yeah. like yeah. we got enough fucking adversity and, yeah. and, and and enemies and things like that. We don't need to be our own motherfucking right. enemy, but we right. do that shit. Yeah. You Absolutely. know, so it's like, hey, yeah. you know, yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's a victim in parable. It's a victim mentality. Yeah. It's like, hey, like we got enough fucking stresses coming from outside. Yeah. Don't be, don't be, don't be one of, the things that makes you unhappy. I think some people, <laughs> you know? I think some people are <laughs> exactly, some people are more naturally inclined to, to, to figure that out on their own. Some other people need to be, to show, be shown that of, of sure. how they get, I mean, get past those things. You can relate it to current times, right? Like we're in quarantine. Oh, yeah. can't go to the gym or, you know, yeah. Oh, poor me. You know, I can't go out and yeah. see someone I want to see, or I'm going to set this new goal that yeah. involves me working out at home you know, using no, your home I, workouts I, to I, yeah. get jacked and have a new goal, right? I so. watch it. I see it. Like, everybody loves to complain right now. And I'm just going to say yeah. it. It's like, hey, if 2020 um, has been beating you up, might be a you thing. It might be. Might be a you yeah. thing, you know? It's, yeah. I, I've had to change. Yeah. Well, like, we've all, everybody, everybody has been faced with the same fuck for, for once. Yeah. With the COVID-19, everybody has been faced with the same fucking problem. Yep. Yeah. 
It's like that person who's like, yeah, and my it, last it, 20 relationships have been terrible. Yeah. It's like, oh, all 20, huh? all 20? Yeah, like, maybe yep. it's you. And, and it, and it, <laughs> it, yeah, you know, and if you just sat in your fucking house and wallowed and, you know, boo-hoo, that might be a yeah. you thing. Yeah. But it's all right. Great point. That's all right. Because because yeah. it's just a it's choice. choice. It's just a choice. Yeah. And it's an opportunity. Yeah. You know? If you if you can take this time to sit back and see that in yourself, yeah. then you can rise above it. Yeah. Boom. The, the Moment of growth right it. there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what, see that's it. what, that's how I look at my, the years of 2008 to 2010 in my life. I was a huge fucking pussy. Or in 2009, 2011 ish. I was, a, I was just a huge pussy. I was making, I was making the wrong choices because I was feeling sorry for myself, hmm. you know, or, you know, I just, and, there was, but I experienced real trauma. Yeah, of course. And didn't yeah. get the right training and things like that. Mm -hmm. But at some point, I could have made better choices. It was, there was, it, there was many paths laid out in front of me. And I chose, you know, a, a couple shitty ones. At any point, I could have done better. So, yeah, like, you know, you're faced with something um, tr traumatic. Yeah, a real, real, real trauma. Oh yeah, real trauma, not bullshit trauma. Real yeah. trauma, right? And you fucking uses it for rocket fuel. Grow I mean, the fuck up. Yeah, you fast. grow up really quick. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I will say it prepares you for the next round of whatever is going to come at yeah. you. Yeah, well, dude, you know once I mean? once once you do that, you're fucking you're invincible. You're putting armor on yourself. Yeah. If you can overcome something like that, then essentially you're yeah. you're saying that hey, next time shit hits the fan, I'll be the guy that can be counted on. Yeah, and that's kind of what what kind of drove me because I I had these people around me that were like, you know, it's kind of like, well, oh, what should we do? Yeah. What should we do? You know, and and I felt like I, I was fortunate that they were kind of looking at me to be. A, a calming presence or to be the leader. I mean, I was their same age. I wasn't, you know, a, a leader per se officially or anything, but yeah. I was like, you know what? This is an opportunity for me to be there for them, yeah. which, which will prepare me for the next thing. So it's like adding armor to yourself oh, yeah. that I think it's, is, it's, it's good for you in the end. Yeah. And, and if you, you can, can stand learn up to how that. to, if you can learn how to deal with that shit in a healthy way and then you're like, all right, I got to be the strong one. Yeah. Cause he's got like, I gotta be the strong one. Yeah. And then sometimes you're like, Oh, why do I gotta be the strong one all the time? Yeah. Well, because you're the fucking strong one because yeah. you're the strong because one because you're the strong one because somebody's got to be the strong one. Yeah. And all we right? can all become yeah. more of a version of that strong <laughs> yeah. one. Like, yeah. Yeah. All right. So. so, so, so that happens in training. Um, you get through fighter pilot training You become yeah. a fighter pilot. Yeah. And then you deployed a few times, didn't you? I deployed once. Once? To, to Afghanistan. So, okay. Yeah, I deployed in 2011 through 2012 for like seven months. Okay. Based out of Bagram. Okay. Uh, have you been there? No, I, been I, went there. I, been there. I went to Iraq. I went to Iraq. That's where that's where Owen got his shit rocked. Okay. You know? Yep. Yeah. I got my shit shot in Iraq. So yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I, dude, I was in Iraq, um, 04, 05, 05, and 2007. Dude. Yeah. We'll, when we'll, in 2000? We'll, a lot of deployments, man. <laughs> when in 2011 were you there? I got there, I want to say it was like uh, October. Oh, okay. I, I was already out of there then. Okay. Yep. Yeah. October. And then I think I left somewhere somewhere in the uh, like the spring of 2012. Yep. So, yeah. That, yeah that you, was a, you were in uh, Afghanistan when I got my leg cut off. I was okay. doing my fucking, uh, I was doing my prosthetic rehab. Yeah. I got my leg cut Where? off December 6, 2011. Okay. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was. I was there. Yeah. 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 I think I probably flew yeah. a combat sortie that day. So I celebrated, yeah. you know. I, I probably did a flyover for army troops that Where day. Where does the word sortie come from? I don't understand mm. this word. I don't either. You I don't, don't know. You don't I'm, know. I'm not going to bullshit you. It's a sortie. Yeah. There's, there, is it an acronym? Probably. Because there's acronyms probably. that become yeah. words in the military yeah. where you're like, what is, is that a, yeah. is that a, like, and then the guy that invented it dies and so then no yeah, one no knows. No one really knows. That's just from, what it's fucking yeah. called. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what, 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 what did you do? What, 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 like as a fighter pilot, what did you do in Afghanistan? Yeah. Well, I was, I was saying, you know, I did a flyby for you for on December 6th. I probably did. We did a ton of shows of presence over there, which is, there's all kinds of different things that we would do to kind of deescalate. Yeah. If they stuff. hear you overhead, yeah. they're like, oh yeah. shit, the, the rain's coming. Yeah. And know? it's also yeah. for morale. So you fly over, you know, a, a ground party that's out there doing, doing the work and you'd let them know you're there. Uh, you know, you're supposed to stay at 5,000 feet, but you that's know, not fun. We no, didn't stay. That's that. not as yeah. fun. That Thanks, doesn't Ryan. boost morale like no, 500. It only happened so lower does. in Iraq, there, you, there it wasn't a thing. You know, like you yeah. can't just you can't just come in and fucking drop a bomb right on Baghdad. You know, right. but one time we were doing like these um, some night raids, and I was a gun team leader at the time, and we were up on a roof, and I do remember a fucking uh, fucking Blackhawk yeah. did a nice low flyby for no good goddamn reason. Yeah, but it was like. 
I mean, it was fucking low. And I was like, yeah. hey, that's sick, you know. But it makes sense that you guys, like, fuck, dude. You guys, so you're doing you're doing air support mm-hmm. for ground. Yeah, um, yeah. I flew seven, yeah. It's like 70 combat missions. Ground is all supporting. My first half of my tour there was supporting night raids or okay. you know, supporting whoever was doing the, you know, Rangers or Delta, whoever yeah. was doing their, their, uh, their thing. We did nighttime flying. So that was my first three to four months. And then I did daytime after that. Um, but yeah, man, it was everything from shows of force to dropping bombs. You know, I dropped a lot of bombs over there. I mean, it, you know, lots of, lots of opportunities to, um, you know, try to figure out who the real enemy was. That was part of our job too, was, you know, you're up there, you're kind of the eye in the sky, but you're the, you're the judge, the jury and the executioner, you know, no one, no one's saying, Hey, maybe you should do this or maybe you should do that. So before going over there, I was like, okay, I'm going over there, over there to spend millions of dollars in jet fuel. You know, and we did the math each for each insurgent that we took out. It was about a million dollars. Yeah. No shit. Something like that. In fuel. In In fuel. fuel, Not just jet fuel. I have a story just just stuck in my brain. Can I, can I cut you off and tell you a cool story? Cause this is fucking awesome. Please. Guys, listen to Jocko's podcast. It was fucking. (laughs) 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 We had this guy is a, he's a saw guy. His call sign was tilt. And, um, he was out, he was out in, uh, in, you know, in the bush somewhere, they call it over the fence. So not in Vietnam, but like Cambodia or Laos or something like that. And they were getting, they were in like their eight man fucking squad and they're getting overrun. Mm -hmm. Close air supports coming closer and closer and closer and things like that. And finally they, you know, they, they call danger close. And so this fucking air force pilot comes over the fucking radio and he says, and he says, put your heads down boys. I'm gonna make you sweat. So that's how he tells them that he's going to drop napalm, you know, <laughs> Damn. and then just, and then, and then, then the, the, this guy tilt is telling the story. And then just as the fucking air force pilot releases the napalm, he comes over the radio and says, it's crispy critter time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's why, wow. I, that's why I joined the military is to be around, or that's what I loved about the military to be around people like that. Yeah. Like when you accept that war is as true a thing as religion it will always be and there's 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 us and them there's good and bad good and bad is determined by what side of the us and them you're on (laughs) but like you know it can't be any other way but it's like that kind of like and 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 people who have been to war and have um really conducted war will understand like the how cool is like yeah. how cool it's crispy critter time. Yeah. Like was, <laughs> did you ever say anything cool before you dropped? Yeah, do you have ball? any like cool one liners um, before you fuck shit up? Yeah. You know, I mean, at the point that I was over there, like your, your tapes would be reviewed by, you yeah. know, could go all the way up to you PC know, type shit. Way, That's what dude, I got. High, I like, got four star yeah. generals looking at your tapes, you know? So, you're careful about that, but <laughs> so they're like, it was, fuck, I really want to fucking masturbate, but oh, there's can't. probably plenty of that. Yeah, they were oh, probably like, just, oh, me too. You <laughs> but you know, it, I don't know. For for me, it was more like there's a lot of times of focus because you're. I don't know how it was with like the napalm and stuff, but their target, like where they were trying to drop on, was probably like, hey, it's 100 yards by 300 yards. Get it, you know, cover that area. For us, we're typing in, you know, sensitive coordinates into into GPS weapons, trying to figure out where the friendlies are, making sure that the coordinates aren't flip flopped, you know, friendly and bad guy. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a lot of concentration, and yeah. you know, there's two of us up there, so we're talking to each other the whole time. So you guys fly in pairs over there? Is that how it? I was flying the F-15E Strike Eagle, so we have a Wizzo weapon systems operator in the back seat. Oh, okay. So yeah, we were flying together. I mean, that was awesome having someone to bullshit with the whole time while you're yeah. flying a, a seven hour when sortie. You, that's how. Good. That's when. So when you're going up. Seven hours is kind of like the, yeah. I think seven was like the average, something like that. Yeah, you're refueling probably set, maybe not seven times, maybe three or four times potentially okay. staying topped off during that time. And, and you guys then, are basically just like on call. Yeah, you would have like, some prearranged yeah. uh, engagements, but uh, yeah, mainly it'd be like, hey, a, a tick, a troops in contact would pop yeah. up. You would get a text message, and are you landing to refuel? You get a, you or get a, you get a quick there? text. Yeah, yeah. text your boys oh, yeah. on text. the ground. Yeah, tick. Yep. Get your tick, ass over here. TikTok, what are you doing? TikTok, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Stop doing barrel rolls. Come yeah. help me out. <laughs> yeah. I'll hey, be right there. Hey, Neo, can you... Uh, you know? No, there was yeah. one time, though, where we got called from uh, around probably like just a few miles north of Bagram, which is by Kabul, down south. We were the only air... It was like Christmas or something. We were the only guys in, that could respond. 
And so we're like, I don't know how many miles that is. I'd be guessing if I, if I said I knew, but the, this is the one thing I said over the radio. Uh, the guy says, Hey, we're getting, you know, we're getting fire from the hillsides and you know, we're way up North. He's like, can you, how fast can you guys get here? And I was like, I don't know, but we'll be supersonic. And I just like plugged it into supersonic <laughs> and like went as fast as we could to get there. I mean, we probably oversped some of our weapons. You're not supposed to go a certain speed with some of the bombs, but I was like, you know what? At this point, these guys are getting shot at. They're oh, potentially really? getting overrun. Oh shit! Is that because so they like fall go. off the plane or something? Or I don't know, man. I don't know. I think it's probably. I probably shouldn't have done it because it's probably some stress test they do on it. But right. you know, at, at a certain point yeah. when guys are dying, you, oh, you yeah. know, you kind of got to do what you got to yep. do. There's yeah. another scenario too. Where take on take on more risks sometimes. That's sometimes you is. have. That's to. all it is. You know? yeah. it's just it's just like yeah. all right. I'm, I'm willing to accept this if, much risk. Yeah. Right. But in this situation, I'm yeah. willing to accept more risk. Yes. Right. Because there's more reward for. Um, yep. Um, if this risk pays yeah. off. Yeah, there was a SEAL team at one point that a guy had gotten kind of separated. He got shot in the leg. He's kind of separated from his guys, and there was, like, this village coming out to like with pitchforks and torches and stuff, and there was some insurgents embedded in them, so we didn't know what was going on. We show up, and, you know, you can, you're supposed to get a you know, situation report, kind of do your thing. No, nah, man, I was like, okay, as soon as we get there, we're going to drop down and just do a flyby right over top of everybody. Yeah. And so we're supposed to go down to 500 feet and, again, accepting a little more risk. Uh, I, I come in and I'm like, okay, if, if I can get these people to disperse, we can get a helicopter to come in and pick this guy up. Don't have to drop a bomb on anybody because these villagers, who knows? You know, yeah. do we need to kill all of them? No. Like, right. th that's not the point of all this. This right. isn't going to win. This isn't going to win World War Three. Right. So I come in and instead of 500 feet, I drop down to like 200 feet or so. And I just had my Wizzo scanning with our radar. And I was like, you know what? If we can, if we can get these burners 200 feet away from this crowd, they will disperse. I guarantee it. Yeah. And so we go down 200 feet right over top of them. And dude, they split like the sea. They just like <laughs> ran for you know, cover. And then they, uh, the rest of the team swooped in and grabbed this guy. They went to the, the LZ for the chopper, got out yeah. of there. So that was like an example of when I was willing to accept more risk. And there was a lot of examples like that. Yeah, so. that's cool. I would, you know, like being in the uh, conventional army, regular army, um, we had, we had a JTAC attached to us in 2007 um, but we were in Iraq, and so it wasn't so much close air support. Super cool how that shit fucking works, like what you did and how it affects the fucking battle on the ground. Because, like, so because you exist, y you and people like you exist, yeah, um, because people like you exist, we can send six guys out anywhere because there's six guys on the ground, but they got a yeah. fucking... <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah, store a shit show Which, in the sky, just waiting, kind of, just a bunch yeah. of people waiting. They're just circling around. They're like, let me fucking just let me Dude. fucking destroy somebody today. Yep. Let me fucking kill someone tonight. Yeah. I just like I just sometimes from really far away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which makes yeah. me proud. You know that we, you know, if you're going to put someone in harm's way in a position where, you know, they might be at a disadvantage, like you put a Ford operating base at the bottom of a valley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like places all around it where they could <laughs> right. be shot yeah. at higher yeah. ground you should put a fighter overhead <laughs> yeah to make sure that they're protected so yeah, yeah. It, it, it made me feel good knowing that we were doing that mm -hmm. so it's cool that's how you you know um gotta have both though yeah. i've heard i've heard you know like with the movement forward in the future and things like that or like the air force you guys are so fucking fixated on controlling the air yeah i'm like yeah gotta control the air yeah Got kick in a door though too. You got to fucking. You got to do both. You gotta, yeah, <laughs> you gotta fucking. It's limited, kick. right? Yeah. You only have the air yeah. force. Yeah, it's, it's like, hey, you you need do. air superiority. You definitely need air superiority, but like, like, but 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 wars are fought and won in the mud. Dude, can I, I, think, can I tell you a story about when I was? The story ends or has a part of it with me sitting in a Connex, eating local Afghan food with three local Afghans. Yeah. I'll tell you that story. Yeah. Did you get some? Did you get some local chai? The, the real deal oh, yeah that stuff cool. so i got the local chai yeah. i got like the goat like the goat was really good that they would make over there so bagram had this bazaar where they would bring in local merchants to try to create some sort of an economy over there yeah. uh, so good on the army for doing that right they're yeah. bringing these merchants in to try to make a living so that they can make some money so they're not you know having to be recruited by the taliban or whatever and i met this guy with a, another couple officers that that i was deployed with and he, his mom was selling scarves that this group of like 50 widows would make. And when the Taliban were kicked out of, of Kabul, essentially we were, women were like free 
in a sense, legally, they were freer free, right? than they were freer before. They yeah. Were. Yeah. They were allowed to learn. They're allowed to go to like school. Like a woman could say that she was open, openly learning without being, you know, technically persecuted by the wild, police. Man, Cause that's goddamn so, 2000 some odd years. That's oh yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. And yeah. so these women are, are finally allowed to learn. And so they were, they were sewing scarves while they were getting like basic history lessons and stuff. And then he would take these scarves to the bazaar on Bagram and sell them. And I was like, dude, you know, how much money are you, how much money are these women making off these scarves? He said about a dollar a scarf. I was like, okay, you know, I mean, I know that's probably something over here, but you know, how else are they making money? And he's like, they're not. They're, maybe they're selling plastic bags or maybe they're like growing an avocado, but then they'll send their kids out into the street to sell that. Like they'll grow one avocado for the month, sell their kid, put their kid out in the streets to sell it. And meanwhile, that kid's getting recruited by the Taliban or mm -hmm. radicals to plant roadside bombs. You know, and then what happens to you happens, you yep. know. Um, so I was like, okay, me and these other guys uh, were like, okay, what? Do, how can we make this bigger to potentially keep more of these kids off the street? So we ended up creating a website. It's called Flying Scarves. It's still a thing. It still exists, but it sells these scarves made by these women. And since we put them on this e-commerce site, they're making about $5 a scarf. Oh, fuck. So it took oh, them. Oh, no shit. So yeah. you, you started them a business. We started them a business. It's a, it's a nonprofit. It's a registered nonprofit in North Carolina. That's where flying, we were based at the time. Flyingscarves.com? Flying Scarves, and Scarves is S-C-A-R-V-E-S. -E okay. Uh, and we've partnered with um, a local a local person in Raleigh. So if, if people go to that website, they'll see the links to buy those scarves if they want to. But essentially, yeah, we sell the scarves made by those women. We've never collected a dollar from it, but it's a nonprofit that adds, you know, stability that is beyond dropping bombs, right? So um, something that I was, you know, proud yeah, about. Five um, bucks a scarf is huge over there. It's huge. It's yeah. I mean, like, it's huge. Yeah. And so these women, we've got pictures of it. I can share it with you guys if you want to add into this episode, but you can see their kids in a school now. You know, so that's they're, cool. they're you know, dude, going that's to awesome. school. Remind, is, have you ever read this book? Which one is it? Three Cups of Tea. Uh, I don't remember. Is that? I read this in college. It was, it was. Greg Mortensen? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Is he legit? Is he a good guy? Or yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I don't know much about him, but you know, I've read that book a long time ago. Yeah, it, it but, just made me think about it. It's like, so you like, so you're fighting the war, but you're also fighting the war by helping people earn a living for them. So this book was yeah. cool because, like, I came, I came from the army. I was like, you, or like we we did hearts and minds and things like that. But it was interesting to see a civilian type person yeah. doing good over there. So like, what this yeah. guy did, what this book is about. Three cups of tea. He was just building schools, you know, and I forget how it came about. He was like touring Pakistan or some shit like that. Yeah. And the the lack of education dude, for women is, and so, you know, and when you're telling me, you know, it, it's interesting. It's, it's, I, it's interesting to me that some people can be both pro equal rights, pro rights and anti-war at the same time. Yeah. You know, it can be multidimensional, man. You can <laughs> you know? a lot, or, or it's like, but it's like, it's like pro rights, but I, an anti-war. So that means it's only pro rights here in America. And we mm. don't give a fuck mm. about the women in Afghanistan mm -hmm. or the kids in Afghanistan or something like that. You know, yeah. it's like, we want equal rights and we're anti-war. Yeah. Like, well, who do you want equal rights for then? Yeah. Just people from your country. Right. Or do you want to fucking globally? So that's like, yeah. that's the argument of like, why is America involved in these wars and shit like that? Well, yeah. and then, and then when you think globally, like the term rights gets mm -hmm. changes, right? Cause yeah. you're talking about the type of rights you're fighting for here. Like, like the right to, to learn something, yeah. you know, yeah. or to not for be real, sold because you by said these fucking, women can openly say they're being educated. Right. How fucked is that? It's crazy. 2000 yeah. some odd. And, yeah. and you know what? You got to respect other people's cultures and things like that to an extent. To, yeah, basic yeah, human rights yeah. that probably, <laughs> yeah. you know, shouldn't be contested. Yeah. Like women yeah. living a free life where they can learn right, and, yeah. you know, and I, contribute to society. Like if, if, that, if women are empowered over there, I think that would be the downfall of fanaticism. If they legitimately had a voice. Now, there's a lot that goes into that, but kind of like what Three Cups of Tea gets at, you know, and, and what you talked about, about being multidimensional. I think anybody going over, like if anyone's listening to this that's going over to Afghanistan or Iraq or Syria right now, there's a lot more that goes into counterinsurgency than security. So before I went, I read, I think it was called the Counterinsurgency Manual by David Petraeus. 
He's a general, you know, he kind of got flack because he had Dude, like I fucking or love General Petraeus. Me too. Yeah. I, I think he's DC. awesome. I got a picture. Yeah. Dude, I think and he was And then he went down just genius. because he was like flirting with some hot ass reporter. Yeah. How yeah. is a I mean, fucking like, infantryman not supposed on his to do wife that? Or something you should they... be fucking everything in sight and killing <laughs> and killing all your enemies. <laughs> what is best in life? Yeah. Well, you know? I, dude, the guy was a genius. <laughs> the guy was a military genius, right? Yeah. And he got like Put, push to the sidelines because of an affair where I, in my mind, I'm like, look, okay, he's, his personal life, it doesn't matter at this point. Let's yeah. talk about his strategic ability this, the, to the, help the, us win in Afghanistan. The is what, um, so he, so he, I'm sorry. Uh, no, he what? was, he did the search. He was yeah. in charge of the search. I was yeah. over there when that search happened, or at least one of them, one of them happened in 2011. I was there, but before I, uh, before I went, I kind of had heard about him and I knew that the things he was talking about made sense. So he talks about, Security being one pillar of a counterinsurgency yeah. and then economics and education being the other pillars of a counterinsurgency. Yeah. So if you just do one pillar, your building, your building's going to fall over. Right. But if you can do all three of those pillars somehow, then yeah. perhaps like the people that are anti-war, then their yeah. kids don't have to go back to Afghanistan. Yeah. You know, in 30 years, I, do the same thing. I'm, if we can do the other pillars. I'm pretty sure. The, so I, I was I was deployed in the surge in Iraq and it was Petraeus's. Oh, Petraeus's okay. Idea. Okay. And like, I get the, so that it was like hands across this fucking area. Cause it was a shitty area, Solder city and around there. We had to fucking it. clear it out, but then build it, you know? And so like, not only was I doing house raids and presence patrols, but we would like go to a school and yeah. we would ask them like, Hey, what do you need? Awesome. And we would give them books and pencils and things like that. And here's a, here's a fucking, here's some bullshit. It's like at some point, and this is true for everything. If there's a group of people that need help, you can help them as much as you want. And if they don't help themselves, they're not going to get better. Sure. So like we would give these schools big ass fucking generators. And then they would get mad at us because we weren't supplying them with the fuel or the maintenance or yeah. something like that. They're like, no, don't help us take care of us forever. Right. We don't want to do anything to help ourselves. We want mm. you to help us. Like, work out like, for man, me. It's like, like, no, you yeah, need to go right, to the gym and yeah. work out yourself. It's like, hey, like, hey, here's, a, in the time. here's, here's, here's <laughs> a generator you will never be able to afford. All you got to do yeah. is just, like, keep it running. You know? Right. Pretty simple. And we're here. But they would, you know, it's like they would be mad. Yeah. Because they weren't given fucking everything. It's like, hey, go ahead and take it upon yourself to. Uh, but then you got to ask, like, should we have given them that generator or should right. we have installed yeah. like a pump that just pumps water from a well? You know what I mean? Like, sure, maybe yeah, there was a more creative way to go about it. But, but sometimes those things happen from someone sitting in an office who is like, oh, let's spend $100,000 on generators where they probably should have talked to someone because there's, there's boots on the ground talking to the local populace. They're called yeah. provincial reconstruction teams. That's what they were called in Afghanistan. I don't know what they were called in Iraq, but uh, I misspoke on the search. So that you're talking about Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was talking about one in Afghanistan, but it was on yeah. the fighter side. So okay. anyway, yeah. I misspoke on that. But, but I think like if you can come down to the people that are really interacting with the local populace and say, what do you think we should do that's sustainable? Then maybe there's more of a chance of that lasting because yeah, I mean, on some level, I think that is kind of, you know, it's bullshit that they're like, Oh, fix this for us. But at the same time, maybe they shouldn't have had it from yeah. the beginning. No, maybe there's a yeah, better solution you're right. yeah. from the beginning, you know, mm -hmm. but dude, you know, when I was in the, when I was in the army, I was just fucking, um, the, the highest that I got to was an E5 team leader. Sergeant type, you know, nice. it wasn't until how many guys I, were you leading? Uh, three other guys. Cool. Yeah. So, um, it wasn't until after I got shot that I learned the bigger picture of everything. You know, yeah, I didn't, well, that's, like the, that's the, amazing. The big dude. picture wasn't, it, you know, and it were like, it, it's an interest, like, shh, I didn't understand the search and it didn't, it didn't so much matter to me too much. It was like, I was just there to fucking. I was there to do what I was there to do, you yeah. know, and I fucking, and I'm, I was cool with it. I didn't need, yeah. I didn't need a why. It's like, Derek, yeah. you got to go to war. Why? Okay. Why? I didn't need a why. I was like, I know my why. My why is to go to war. Right. Send me, tell me what to do. Or we're going to fucking do it. But it was after I got shot that I was reading all these books about like the fucking shitty tactics we right. may have tried and things. Deeper layer there. Yeah. Things we could have done better and all this stuff. I'm yeah. like. Oh, that's, that's real interesting. Yeah. It's really, it's pretty interesting. Or like why we went to Iraq. Right. You know, Hey, but like, we don't know everything and stuff like that, but it's, it's just weird. Yeah. So, but, it, it, but it's you started weird. diving yeah, into that but like after the boots that on happened. the grounds and, and, and asking, I remember <laughs> doing a uh, security or like we would, we would escort like the psyops people, we called them where they would like conduct their fucking 
city meetings. It was like we would escort these fucking smart people. I don't know what the fuck. And we'd take them in and they'd, they'd talk to the neighborhood elite, whatever the fucking word for the elite over there is, you know. But Tribal leaders or yeah, whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, sure. Yeah. And they'd be like, what do you need? Yeah. What do you need? So that was a big part of our job. Like, what do you well, that's need? That's cool. You know? Yeah. It's a big, I mean, like, that's cool that you had that realization. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it, you know, obviously it happened during a traumatic time in your life too, but do you think it was a trauma that brought that on? Like the Satori, have you heard of like a Satori experience? You like experience trauma and then you see like or, what life's really about. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, it could be. To be, to, to, called? to be, be more clear. I don't know. I could be out, out, out of left field on that one, but uh, I think it is called a Satori experience. By my third deployment, I was super down with giving a shit about the people and helping them. Yeah. Because I, I, I wanted to go the special forces route. And so I was reading books about what it meant to be like a green beret and how they conducted themselves and things like that. And that's, Mm -hmm. it's literally how I learned the word rapport (laughs) as I was reading a book to try to be, um, the type of person a special forces guy would be. I learned the word rapport and like, and they're, and it's like, Hey, you want to be a soldier and fucking kill people? Cool. That's fucking easy. You want to be an elite soldier and give a fuck about, People who live in the country that you're fighting a war in, here's how you do that. Right. <laughs> you, know? yeah. you gotta learn, wow. you gotta you gotta learn compassion, you gotta learn empathy, you gotta learn how to build rapport. So this was I, I read this, I was reading this and studying this in 2006, and I got deployed January 2007. So by the time we went over there, I was I was, I was way nicer. It's super cool over there mm-hmm. in Iraq. It is like their tradition, like they fucking wave. They wave. People don't wave here. Yeah. I wave to my neighbors. <laughs> they do in the I South. They do in like South right. Carolina and North right. Carolina. But like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't cool in Las shit, Vegas. But, yeah. but, but they, Las have, Vegas. they have rules for it. You can yeah. you wave with your right hand, not your left. You know, uh, it's like yeah, open yeah. palm and shit like that. They have this yeah. way of doing things. I was like, how fucking cool. So like once I, hmm. you know, my first two deployments, nah, I didn't give a, you know, no, I'd fucking... I'd kick you in the face yeah. if you looked at me. You know, sure. Kick, well, you, you kind of had to be on some level, right? Yeah, well, I was 19, 20 years old. Yeah. And like I was, I was in Iraq when I was 19 years old, you yeah. know, that's, a, that's crazy. Man. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, when yeah. Were you well, how I was, I was, it was t- uh, in 2005, in 2000, in 2005, when I was 19 years old. I was in Iraq. I was a gun team leader and my squad leader was separated from us training local police. So me and my, me and my friend were the team leaders acting squad leaders for the gun team. And we were both 19, 20 years old. And a like, lot that's, of a shit ton, that's a shit ton of fucking responsibility. It's a lot. You yeah. know? Yep. At 19 yeah. years old, you know? And so it's like, yeah, we want to fucking kill everything. But then I, I grew up when I learned about uh, empathy and compassion. And I was in that. college probably at yeah. a frat party or something like yeah. that to put that in perspective. Like, yeah. dude, that's that's amazing that you're 19 <laughs> doing that. It's weird, it's, right? I wasn't in a frat for the record, like, but I was probably at the yeah. party. But no, like our second deployment. <laughs> I was definitely at the <laughs> our, party. Our, <laughs> if our, if our I probably second was. Deployment Free was, beer. Was, <laughs> if our second deployment was, was four months, at least two of those months, we didn't have a squad leader. And we were operating just fine. Cause we, you know, like that's a, it's yeah. an interest. That's a lot of responsibility for someone. But that yeah. third of the point is the third time is like started caring about the people and yeah. what you did for those women. Is well, pretty fucking cool. It, it just had like, my eyes open. Yeah. I just had my eyes open. I came across that guy and I listened and I think the army does a better job of just kind of encouraging. And I'm not saying they do a great job, but maybe you can elaborate on it, but it seems like they kind of in, at some level encourage you to at least open up your eyes and see what's going on around you i mean i i don't know like leadership development in the army to me is interesting because i've a lot of the army leaders i've met they seem to have emotional intelligence and they seem to be someone that i could have a conversation with i mean i, try, I love pilots because i i am one and i have to but at the same time no, you guys are, are a fucking different breed to Dude, me like i you know it's I, different yeah. you're you're up in the air you're pushing buttons and you're learning about tactics you know to yeah. fight China in a war that happens at 50,000 feet with AMRAMs. Like which is which is a lot different than doing a patrol or setting up a traffic it's, control point and right. you're looking at people who are inside cars and you're... Looking you're, at body language. You're two feet away yeah. from these people. Yep. Yeah, you're looking at body well, they, language. Like you're, the Air Force you're meeting with the people. Air, like the Army... The Ar- like it is what it is. The Army is like... I don't... Like harder. Harder. You know? If, if, there's, if there's a PC hierarchy in the military... I think I think the Air Force is pretty. No, I I understand what you're saying. Like, cause I didn't. 
I married into the Air Force. Yeah, you love the it's, Air Force for the, for the record. Yeah, yeah. Literally. I have a I have an Air Force <laughs> wife hat up there. And yeah, she's but, awesome. But Stacey's was, awesome, by the way. Shout out to Stacey. Yeah, but it was interesting because like so like I understood this from so in the army, the enlisted, or it's like the officers support the enlisted. The enlisted people do the work mm -hmm. and the officers do the planning and things like sure. that and the logistics. In the Air yeah. Force, the the enlisted do the planning and yeah for the most and the officers yeah. or like i'm talking about flying yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. the officers are the doing officers the job are the spear yeah and yeah it's, it's just it's just weird it's, it's different it's flip-flops yeah. but yeah i always respected the fact that i felt like the army cared about leadership and emotional yeah. intelligence how to interact with people a little bit more than what i've seen and i'm sure it's not perfect but you know it to yeah. me to me, like if you're on the ground and you're interacting with people, you probably should think about what you thought about. But did you do that on your own when you had that experience? Like, did you think, okay, I want to think deeper on, on your own or were you kind of encouraged to? No, that, that one, that one was definitely me wanting to be with a better class of men. Cool. You know, that one, you know, that, cause that's when you're in a fucking line unit. No. Well, average no, average like, age average age in those two units is completely different. Like yeah. average age is nineteen in in a line. Right. Unit. Well, like back when, so, but actually, like back then, so like they had just opened up like Sopsy or whatever the fuck. They just started yeah. taking again. So it used to be like if you wanted to go green the Green Beret Special Forces route, it'd be like twenty five years old or something like that. But they were taking kids in eighteen years old. Wow. Yeah. yeah. yeah if you if you had a high selection. enough yeah. GT score and could yeah mm -hmm. you know, pass their yeah but it, yeah so yeah no it was it was um just reading books and i was and i wanted to be with those guys but i was like this rosy cheeked <laughs> fucking kid with a yeah. fucking high and tight yeah and then i'm looking at these pictures of grown-ass fucking men and they're just they're just stoic yeah and i'm here i'm just you know and i'm just like i'm gonna win the fucking war yeah you know it's like hey you know how you win wars <laughs> win the people yeah <laughs> kill the enemy be proficient enough to kill the enemy yep live without fear you know but um give a shit yeah you need to be able to fucking be violent and the nicest motherfucker at the same time which i think is a great way to live your life in general yeah right like if you can be that renaissance man or yeah. renaissance woman well that's what true power like is that. yeah. true power is never having to say you have it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly it's just, like it's walk just known yeah carry a big mm -hmm. stick yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and then if you if you're a good dude and people yeah. respect you and they like you, it's almost like you're beating the system, right? Because then yeah. you do have the power when you need to influence somebody, they're going to actually yeah. listen to you. So it's and like a it's like a backdoor yeah. way to have power. <laughs> and this yeah, so this and it this all sounds like nefarious then, but then like the truth the it really only works if you actually give a shit. Yeah. If you're trying to learn like how to build rapport totally. with someone, yep. if you're trying to learn empathy and compassion, if you're not genuine, it's yeah, not. If you if you don't understand, it's it, it doesn't work. So like people our, can pick up yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, this guy is trying to sell me some shit. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Speaking of selling shit, you eventually got out of the Air Force. Yeah. You know, did did, did deployments, um, and you got out um, in what year? I got out of, so I did the Thunderbirds after the oh, F-15E. Oh, shit, e. fuck, Dude, yeah. We, we got to fucking, how got, the fuck? Got to talk about this, that Because this shit. is how Holy we fuck. met, yeah. This is how we met, I was yeah. just super excited to talk about, yeah, but no, right? You were a fucking Thunderbird. Right. Yeah, that I means did. you're a yeah. decent pilot, at least, like, right? Mostly, you're all yeah. right. No, okay. that means okay. that you're a very good pilot. Like, <laughs> is, that, is it really hard to become a Thunderbird pilot? I would say yes, but I don't say it in a bragging way. I think you could probably teach any fighter pilot to do it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. For for me, I feel I felt like I was always someone who I was never really good at the book stuff, like the beeps and squeaks of like the AMRAM or like the GBU fifty four. You know, like I just knew that it worked. I was like, cool. I push the button and it works. Sweet. That's all I really need to know. Yeah. You know, I needed like put the jet in this position. Great. But then when it came to like dog fighting and like low flying, I loved it. I just felt like that came more natural to me, like the stick and rudder type stuff. So when the opportunity for the Thunderbirds came up, it just sounded fun. I was like, this sounds like fun flying because for me, like, okay, I'm going to be doing a lot of stick and rudder type stuff. I'm going to be, you know, doing rejoins with 300 knots of closure at half a mile. I mean, the flying just sounds like a lot of fun. So that's why I kind of thought it would be fun to fly on the flying side. But 
um, as far as the, there's a whole other side to the Thunderbirds. It's like you're this, you're a PR officer yeah. for this the is, Air Force. This is an interesting yep. thing. Like yeah. there's two, you're, you're filling yeah. two roles, you yeah. know? So I thought you had to kind of be a robot and like say the company line and all that stuff, which I'm sure it depends. But at the time I learned that it wasn't like that. The culture of the team was, you can be yourself. You can kind of bring who you are to the table. And, and when you go and you speak at schools or you speak at events, you can kind of bring, you know, who you are and, and tell your story about why you joined. So when I heard that, and then, and then I kind of combined that with the fact that I could, you know, do all this cool stick and rudder flying, I was like, oh, tell me more. So is, went, is, is, is flying on the Thunderbirds team? Is it, is it really, is it, is it challenging? Like, yeah. Is that hard ass shit where it's, you have to be really fucking good to be able to do that stuff or it's honestly, it, I didn't think it was going to be as hard as it was. Really? So it was a lot harder than I thought. You know, there were days where I'd come home from training and I'd be like, I'm, you know, I'm not going to make it like, this is, this is crazy. Like I'm, I'm done. You know, like you come What's home. What's hard about it? You are constantly like when you're in formation, you're constantly on and you are literally a bump away from hitting the airplane next to you. Or so the you're ground. just super high alert. You're high alert the entire time. time. Yeah. The yeah entire that drains you. That's yeah. exhausting. Yeah. And yeah. you're like doing an isometric hold with, while you're doing that. Cause the stick you have to put, essentially you put forward pressure to where you're constantly pulling back just allows you to control the jet more precisely. So you're literally holding a 30 pound weight in your hand the entire time and your, your necks twisted. I flew with Thunderbird two. I was on the left side of the formation. So I was constantly looking to the right for the most part, we'd split up from time to time, but yeah, so you're constantly looking at the jet next to you. We, we flew, you know, two and a half feet away from each other. So you're, you're one bad. Bump. That's how close you guys are up there. Jeez. About two and a half feet. And then yeah. you, you get closer, but then you correct back to two and a half feet. Yeah. It's kind of like your safety zone where you'll stay. Um, and then you do, you know, we do maneuvers like the high bombers at the end of the show where you're, you know, we would go out, we would basically split, kind of do like this blossom thing. And then you go up and you point down at the ground. You're like 90 degrees pointed down for like 15 seconds. You're just watching the earth go like get closer and closer mm -hmm. to you. So, it was a lot of fun, but like your, your adrenaline is pumping the entire time. Yeah. You know? So you get done and you're just like, you're drained. Yeah. Like I would imagine like, I don't know no. what, what would be, be the equivalent in the army. Like you're running, you know, you're, you're doing a patrol. I mean, that'd be like a firefight every, yeah. yeah. Like as soon as that shit goes off. Yeah. Or, or I, don't, I don't know. Like, I hate comparing that because no, in the no, Thunderbirds, you're not getting shot the, at. It's <laughs> not the same because you get, I don't know, you get conditioned to patrolling and always being on guard, but I just yeah. understand or yeah. just, let's just call it the fucking same, you know? Yeah, you I mean, know? the yeah, like, the yeah. adrenaline pumping the entire time, mm -hmm. knowing that you're, you're, you are, you know, I've, and then, I had, and then for you, it's just a job. It's just, it's just like a job thing. Or it's like being that. in like Cirque du Soleil or something like that. The yeah. training that must go in. I'm not yeah. trying to, but the, the training, the yeah. training that goes into something. People sure. see you fly. Sure. But the training for it and the planning. Yeah. And the admin shit and all yeah. that stuff just to fly yeah. a show, you know. We did two, for our training season, you do two flights a day for, you know, three months in a row. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, you're starting out. flights? They're pretty short. They're like 50 minutes to an hour. Oh, casual. Do, you know, yeah. yeah. I usually fly that much every day. Yeah. Is that your normal? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least. <laughs> um, dude, you could have flown with us. You were so close. I felt like you. I still could. I still have still it in. Could. Over there, it's a lot of fucking paperwork. It is a lot of paperwork. The risk yeah. assessments take a really yeah, long yeah, time. We, we, yeah, just, last know. week we had a woman <laughs> trying to tell me to fucking uh, 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 register to vote. Right. I was like, before I do that, I'm gonna go fly with the Thunderbirds. You know. So yes. Like, yeah. Dude, actually, that should happen. Stacy went to college with uh, um, uh, Thunderbird Five and Mace. Yeah, Mace. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Connect super, with her and do really it. cool. Yeah, it's super no, fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just I, I'm down. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just, just like they call me. They're like, paperwork. "Hey, Derek, you want to fly with us?" I'm like, "Yes." Yeah. Oh, wait, that, I'm that's, trying to get another workout in today. That's no, no, <laughs> no. It's not that. It's like that's the, the end. It's up. like, "Hey, do you want to do this?" Yes, I do. Okay, don't send me fucking thirty yeah. pieces of paper to fucking look through and well, sign. Can't Stacy just oh. forge your signature? Derek hates <sighs> paper. I know. I he wish Stacy's so Air Force. I'll forge your signature. Stacy's, Send it to me, Stacy's so Air Force. She won't forge my signature. All right. Well, Owen yeah. and I got you, dude. And that's Send us that's the your that's cool. your fucking that's your <laughs> branch of the military. That <laughs> Derek's gonna be sitting. At, <laughs> yeah. he's gonna be sitting at home one day, yeah. and like someone's gonna show up and be like, "Get in the car get right the now." Car. It's gonna yeah. be like a military. We got vehicle. Matt Fraser up yeah. in the fucking Thunderbirds. I heard. It. I saw. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. But yeah, but yeah, it's the training man is like kind of what you would expect. 
you could comp- probably compare it to like powerlifting. I would assume like you start. I would say lighter, flying for the get, Thunderbirds is harder than <laughs> powerlifting. And I, actually, yeah. you know, I I don't know if you want to talk about this or not. Um, but I, it was interesting to hear that um, you had lost a friend in your early days in training. Yeah. And I know yeah. that here, one of the Thunderbirds. Yeah, close friend of mine, yeah. Stephen Cajun. And I met, I met, I actually met him. I remember met him. meeting him. Great dude. Because you invited me. Because so this is how Ryan and I met. Is like he invited me to come tour the fucking Thunderbird hangar yeah. and shit yeah. like that. He yeah, was we just hung like, out hey, for a bit. Yeah. It was a fun day. Yeah, I was up in their yeah. fucking little room and shit like that. And yeah, he was dropping f bombs in front of our I boss. Met. I loved it. I was yeah. Like, yes. yes. I was like, yeah, I was yeah, like, hey y'all, can, you, can I say pussy here? Are you guys it you awkward. Got, you ain't some of them PC pussy cunts, are you? <laughs> Sick. You know. Yeah. Dude, but that yeah. was a fun day, man. Yeah, it was a good time. But yeah. Dude, I mean, I lost a buddy in training. I lost yeah. a buddy in Syria in 2014, crashed an F-16. Uh, so the first guy was... Just crashed or... Yeah, he well, he crashed at night yeah. on, a tr- on a combat flight. No okay. one really knows exactly what happened, but yeah. that guy was my college roommate. The first guy that we lost was a, a good friend of mine in RTC. So I don't know, man. For a while, I was like, dude, this is crazy. You know? But I know that everybody in the military has had the experiences where they've lost close friends and kind of like what we said before there was like i had put on the armor the first time and then the second time it happened i was like Oof. Yeah. For a, i mean for a day you get the you know the lump in the in the yeah, chest no, what was it you know i, I it was just um, it was within the last month one of my good friends killed themselves a lot of suicides are happening and, with the pandemic and like, man. that's but, crazy is that but, what happened like or, or not like but he he's been an interesting he's an above knee amputee he was an above knee amputee <sighs> as well and he's just like he was he was open about his um Depression struggles with yeah. mental health and depression, and he was an advocate for people to combat yeah. that shit. Yeah, yeah. But you could always kind of tell when somebody's a bit off, you know. Sure. When they're always asking how you're doing, Might maybe be you should they ask, want you to ask. Maybe yeah. you should ask how they're doing, you know. But mm-hmm. I can't, you know. Nobody has all the time in the world to always check on everybody and things like yeah. that. But any, you know, I got a I got a call from a friend, and you know, he's like, "Hey, he fucking killed himself." Yeah. And I'm at this point. I'm just like at this point I'm like all right yeah like you kind of now I know right now like uh, now I know and that's that's it for me because like after you know it was like I don't know four or five people overseas and then in the last 12 years Mm -hmm. I don't even know yeah 15 20 crazy, 10, 10 to 20. 22 a day right 10, veterans or some I, I don't i don't i don't i don't believe that stati- i don't know i don't i don't want to talk about that and i don't want to fucking it's yeah. just what well, is just you just get conditioned to it or something like yeah, that. it makes it sound know? normalized kind yeah of. I, yeah I it's that. just it's just the plight of, uh, but that's what we do and that's what we fucking well i think the pandemic i mean i don't know if your friend committed suicide because of the pandemic but surely people's you know resilience is lower now yeah which everyone being locked inside you gotta yeah. you gotta ask like is this the smartest way to go about it now mental health issues start coming oh, yeah. about like there's a statistic out there it says every one percent of unemployment 30,000 people die early. Bloomberg published a study that said that, mm. which is a real number, right? Like that's, that's something that we should all talk about. Right. Anyway, that's a side. But when tangent. does personal responsibility come in? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's, it's true. Fucking weird shit, but uh, it's true. So, um, so two, two, two good friends. And then yeah. in the Thunderbirds, like right here, it's the Thunderbirds yeah. and you don't expect, yeah. and it's always, it's always a little bit more difficult is like when you expect to die, yeah. All right, that makes sense. Right. That makes sense. Right. When we were overseas, when when like guys were dying overseas, when I was getting shot, that makes sense. On this side, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And it's a little bit more difficult to process until you process it. And then it's and then for sure. Good, then you're good to go forever. So Yeah, and well, especially I feel for his family. His family's amazing. I've be, yeah. you know, they they've set up a foundation, his name as well. Oh really? Yeah. I think it's called Cajun's Aviation Dream. It's the name of the foundation, but it basically it supports kids to go get uh, flight training uh, mm. to kind of pursue a dream in aviation as well. But yeah, man, I mean, the guy was just an awesome pilot. He's an F thirty five pilot, so you know, are those those sick ass ones? The that's just the, that and and they, and they can fly like this, where they kind of uh, like that's F twenty two. F twenty two has thrust vectoring, where they can do that. F twenty two is the F thirty five is a new. F thirty five is like the the newest one. It's been in the news a lot, where it okay. had like a lot of problems at first. Oh really? They've like had to work them out, and I think they're finally they finally got it. That worked one out. had like a ridiculous maintenance 
cost to it or something? Yeah, it, it might have, but I think they've gotten that under, under control. Okay. But um, lots of controversy behind it as yeah. well. But I think there's like, there's a statistic that like there's a part of it built in every state. So like <laughs> it's here, it's here to stay. You know? All American. <laughs> it's all an all American, American fighter, that's how, that's how, you yeah. know, that's the, the AA on the 82nd patch. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. So like on the 82nd <laughs> Airborne patch, it says AA. That's awesome. Yep. It's the all Americans because there was like, because the Airborne, there was somebody from every motherfucking state Dude, volunteering that's cool. to jump out of go airplanes and go fuck kill Germans. I love history. <laughs> Dude, yes. Kill the Nazis. Kill, kill them Nazis. I love the history behind the patches, man. There's yeah. something cool that people forget about and they yeah. just think it's normalized. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the patches that I wore at uh, when I went to deploy in Afghanistan, they're from the Royal Eagle Squadrons. Mm. So when Britain went into World War II, America was isolationist. Does, any, does this have any affiliation with the Eagle in Cambridge? Yes. I've been there. Have you? The fucking bar? awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. dude. That, I drank yeah. downstairs in the fucking what? corner where it's like dimly lit and it was like a cutout dude. in the fucking wall. That place is a, yeah, a legendary yeah. bar. Did you, were there names of aviators? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Over it? yeah. it was on the ceiling and on the yeah. walls. Have you ever been I to I haven't been no. there, but I've if heard you, the yeah, legend of it. Go to the Eagle. Okay. It's in Cambridge. Yeah. Why were you there? We were on vacation. Cool. Perfect. And that's where we went. Amazing. Yeah. Dude, that's <laughs> yeah. so badass that you sought that out. <laughs> yeah. That place is that's, legendary. Yeah. So Stacy, um, shit, she was in the Air Force at the time. We went to visit one of her friends who was in the Air Force who was stationed over there doing some shit. Yeah. And that's where we met. And, and I was, and that's where I really fucking, that's actually where I really understood the culture and history and tradition of pilots. Nice. I was like, that's cool. hey, this makes sense. Well, These guys have a fucking deep lineage of yeah. And those were the roll calls where they were, yeah. hey, who's who's yeah. left from yeah. the battle? You know, like speak yeah. up, speak up if you're here because there's a lot of guys that didn't come back. Yeah. But the uh, so the Royal Eagle Squadrons were set up in North Carolina after World War II, but we were isolationists. But we were we were kind of letting some pilots kind of, hey, if you don't show up for the next six months, we were, we're not going to say you're AWOL because we know you're going to be flying British airplanes against the Nazis. So we were sending American pilots over right. to, to fly oh, yeah. mm -hmm. their on the, jets. On the yeah. We were, yeah, we were isolationists, which is you know kind of kind of cool. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, so they went over and there. When they, you say isolationists, like we were fighting the war, but we weren't fighting the war. That's what you we're publicly right. isolationists, yeah. Yeah. where we're like, hey, we're not involved we're in World War II. Sending our fucking pilots, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we're sending our pilots over. So a lot of American fighter pilots flew early, early on in World War II, and that became the Royal Eagle squadrons, which then when they came back, the, you know, a lot of American pilots died over there as well. But when, when they came back, they established the Royal Eagle squadrons in America. And so our patch, it's just, you know, it's kind of just like this heritage that we have, haven't done that kind of like the, we had the, the balls to send our fighter pilots over there to fight. Uh, so we wear this patch that has like a crown on it, which, you know, represents those badasses who decided to take the risk in foreign aircraft, you know, without the, blessing of the u.s and and who know i don't know if they would acknowledge them you know if they died i don't know oh, if they right. got benefits like or, right. or you know whatever be, but they were like you know what we're gonna go fight evil and so those guys that went and did that they're they're memorialized in the eagle squadrons that are now 334th 335th uh, 336 which are squadrons over in north carolina and that's right that's where i deployed from was those squadrons to go over to afghanistan so the squadrons are awesome they're alive and well they're flying f-15 oh, yeah. now out of pope they're out of Seymour like? Johnson. So okay. it's a great name, right? Seymour <laughs> Seymour Johnson. <laughs> wanna, like, Holy shit. I want to be there. You for that would meeting. come out like, of Seymour yeah, Johnson. Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that meeting? They're sitting yeah. around a table. They're like, what should we name this base? Johnson Seymour? What was Johnson's yeah. first no. name? Yeah. yeah. What was Johnson's <laughs> yeah. first name? I think it was Seymour. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. So. Oh, dude. <laughs> Leave it to aviators to be right? appropriate. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. And I couldn't, I yeah. don't know if I could do that. Dude. But you were asking about, so Steven, who passed away on, yeah. the, on the Thunderbirds. I mean, dude, the, the flying there is unforgiving, just like yeah. it is in, in any fighter jet or any military operation. Yeah. But um, he essentially G-locked. So he was doing a maneuver where he was pulling, he was going from a certain amount of negative Gs to positive Gs. And human body can only maintain, can only you know, pull so many G's. So the F-16 is limited to, to nine G's. So you can sit there and pull as hard as you want on the stick and it's going to limit you to nine G's. Not because the metal, maybe the metal will bend. At a, I don't know when it would, will bend, but it surely will go beyond nine. Um, I have a story so what, about a what guy. What can the body go to? So I think nine, people, some, there's so, like genetic freaks so, out so there. So what's the most uh, G's you pulled? 
It was like nine point one. So yeah. you know, like these 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 uh, SpaceX astronauts, they just what are they pulling? Dude, they're Three. probably pulling. More. How many? Three. Uh, okay. Oh, that's I it. Where yeah. the fuck, dude? Yeah, but like, it's like prolonged, right? It's a long. Yeah, but time it's like, but it was but only three G's, and I was like, wait, this yeah. is. I yeah. mean, my buddy Ryan pulls fucking nine point one three yeah. G's for breakfast, yeah. man. Right? Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, uh, but I was surprised to hear that the astronauts only pull three G's on their way to fucking out of the atmosphere. That's interesting. That's I thought it'd be more. I thought it'd be no, more it cool. shows that shit right on the fucking dial. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm not. Yeah. Because I paid attention to that. I was like, wow, interesting. Because I remember you telling me stories. Yeah. And I know the story Yeah. of Cajun. And, yeah. Um, you had met him. Yeah. You yeah. knew how good of a dude he was. But yeah, that flying's unforgiving. He had, a, he had a maneuver where he was going from like negative, you know, whatever, one point something to to nine or or maybe seven or whatever. But basically it just overshot his G tolerance. Uh, so so what yeah. happens when you like do you black out when that happens yeah i mean i've felt it like you i mean there's like different realms so you like train to this like i went through a whole training course somewhere in like san antonio i think actually and you go through this it's like this big metal arm and it takes you through it's the one that spins the G profiles yeah it spins and it, it'll go from like three to nine to two because that's like what you do in a dog fight in a dog fight you're like Okay, ease off you go to like two g's while you're like building energy and then you pull to reposition and it's like nine so it takes you through that profile so you go through all that training and you, and you're using a g suit the whole time as well so it's kind of replicating what you'll see in a fighter but yeah you, we all go through that training uh, but you know everybody can have a bad day there's all kinds of factors that go into it you know hydration levels are huge if you're yeah. dehydrated i think your g tolerance can go down by like two g's or something crazy like that um you know you uh, sleep levels impact it, uh, you know, stress levels, all kinds of things can impact your G tolerance. So, you know, there is an athleticism to flying fighter jets. It's not, you know, you can get by, you know, being not a super athlete, but strangely enough, guys that, and, and girls that smoke, like if their blood pressure is higher, I'm not advocating to go smoke if you want to be a fighter pilot, but if you have higher blood pressure, you're better at pulling Gs. So when you get people that are like marathon runners and stuff, no offense to you, Oh, right. I know yeah. you're about I, to get into marathons. Basically, yeah. almost there. <laughs> yeah. You started yeah. jogging. A I did a weeks mile ago, the other day. So, uh, so does, does, yeah. does, does chewing tobacco count? Does that yeah. help? Does, yeah. does, does is it raise your blood not, pressure? I don't know. It's tobacco. It's not smoking. But, I I went through um, flight school with a German guy, and every time before we jumped in a plane to fly, he would like suck down a cigarette in like 90 seconds to yeah. get his blood pressure to optimal also, level. I think that's why he said he did it, but you know, he's addicted <laughs> to cigarettes. Yeah. Too. But the guy could pull G's. Yeah, I will yeah. say fucking the guy science, could pull man. G's. <laughs> you got to smoke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing this for my skill, my fighter skills, but, um, yeah. So he had a bad day. I uh, ended up, you know, crashing out at the Nellis ranges out here. And yeah, it's not the first time that's happened. There's been, you know, a few, a handful of Thunderbirds throughout the years that have, that have died for the reasons I talked about. I mean, uh, amazing guy, but again, his, his, like me his memory makes me want to do better. Just like what we talked about, mm -hmm. you know, but I've, I mean, I had scenarios where I was, I was in one of the roles where you're going, you're basically going into negative G territory where I would push over to stay on the inside of a turn and stay close. And I was teaching the new guy how to do it. And no, by no fault of his own, like he gets way too close in a position where if we would have stayed there, we would have definitely smacked into the, the lead jet. So I roll and pull as hard as I can. And we're, we're probably, you know, 400 feet above the ground at that point. And I roll and pull as hard as I can towards the ground with, you know, probably nine G's and we're 400 feet above the ground. And so then I roll us back out. I'm in the back seat of this of this thing. I roll us back out. And oh, I cover. so somebody else was flying and they fucked up and you're trying to teach them. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it wasn't his fault. I, I probably did, you know, something similar. Uh, maybe it wasn't quite as ugly, but it, you know, I made mistakes too. We all do. And then, you know, I roll out 75 feet above the ground. And it's Jesus. Like, it's like, you know, Hey man, you got lucky today. You know, you lived, you lived to play another day. Yeah. Congrats. Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to go home and cry, Super, cry about yeah. it. You're going to say, you know what? That was a huge lesson learned. And again, Seeing your own death happen like that, it makes you want to, makes you want to live life. Oh, the fullest, did, man! Did, um, <laughs> um, I'm gonna take a pee and then I'm gonna ask you a question. Cool. All right, all right. Pee break over. Tobacco in. Beers refilled. Initiate conversation. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so you pulled a trainee 
out of a tight spot. Yeah. But, like basically yeah. we're just talking about like how dangerous that shit is. It's dangerous. Yeah. I it, was, it's just unforgiving. Yeah. And, and you said something, um, at what point in the military did you accept your own death? I think it started when my buddy passed away in pilot training, man. Yeah. I think that started it where I was like, whoa. It was like your own, no, like your own death. Like I can die. Well, I think that started the process of yeah. like, okay, this guy, because dude, the guy, my buddy that died, you know, he was a friend of mine for, for three and a half years in college. We, mm. we had so many experiences together, having fun being stupid college kids. I was just like him. Like I wasn't any better or any different than him. He died. So I think that started the process. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think it just little experiences like that continued on. I mean, deploying also added a lot to it. I mean, mm-hmm. when I was over there, we had a, a, f- a few pilots die right before I got you there. Have people on the ground dying yeah. while you were circling overhead and things like that. And you just yeah. feel like the sense of like, oh, yeah. I want to fucking do shit. Let's oh, yeah. 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 Well, a lot yeah, of times it'd be someone got like maimed or, or hit by, a, you know, a mortar or something like that. Yeah. Insurgents were leaving mortars in ice blocks. So the ice yeah. blocks would melt. Yeah. And, and then we uh, would ice blocks. Oh, yeah. They fucking I was never in them. Afghanistan. So I don't know. I don't I'm not familiar with like the tactics of that. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I remember. We, <laughs> so they briefed us on that when we first <laughs> got there. Owen yeah. was a fucking Charlie. He I won't was. tell you this when it's upon first meeting you, but he is a Charlie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so th- what what what's so fucking cool about that is when you look at like all the technology and shit that we have when we go to war and then we're we're fighting these guys who literally take mortars and freeze them in blocks of ice yeah. and hang them and then just let yeah. the fucking ice melt away. No, dude. And so it- before 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 the invasion of Iraq, um I read a book. Um they war gamed how this shit would play out and some yeah. general was in charge of the Iraqis in this war game and it turns out the Iraqis won the war in the war game and the the our top military people were like how did you fucking communicate we were looking for all your you know like your radio frequencies we're doing all this shit and this guy was just like <laughs> Couriers, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, right. smoke signals, bro. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. taking it back you to know. the 1800s, mm-hmm. motherfucker. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it works. I mean, that's why there's know. like this this overconfidence in technology. Yeah, you have to train your fucking boots on the ground. Yeah, yeah. well, it's like to, taking the I gun just, off of the F4. Yeah, and then they went to Vietnam and they were like, oh, yeah. oh shit, these MIGs are killing us with their gun, and we can't. Our missiles are malfunctioning. Yep. Yeah. Humidity was was making their missiles not work. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so getting cocky and relying on technology. I was just I was trying to yeah. imagine what it would be like to be you circling in a plane overhead mm-hmm. and people are on the ground dying. Yeah. Then I remember, oh yeah, I know what that feels like because I was in a fucking hospital bed right. while my friends were dying. I just kept yeah. getting the news. This guy died. This Damn. guy died. This guy's in the hospital. This guy got fucking shot. I got. Yeah. A, I had a buddy. I had, I had a good friend. He was in my fucking gun team. And then I switched units, and like he's in a different unit, and he gets shot through the neck. He gets shot through the fucking Damn. neck, and he survives. He's a weird motherfucker. Wow. Yeah, he was cool. What was yeah, your but, What was your mind like when you got that news? As far as just like, do we just like? Did it make you like have a couple hours? We didn't want to do anything, or were you like, okay, I'm gonna work harder today? No, I was rehab? pissed, man. I was okay. like, get me the fuck in the fight. Yeah, fuck this shit. You know, I was no actually at, at no point in time in my hospital stay or in my rehab stay did I ever lose um, focus. I had a goal. My goal was to get back to my unit. Yeah, I that I nice. I, I, tr- I tried to convince him to fucking cut my leg off way before. They cut actually cut my leg off. I, I still had shit I wanted to do. Um, could you have gone back if they cut it off sooner? Like could could you have gone back as an amputee? I don't I don't know mm. how that would work. Well, I told the doctors I said someday somebody's gonna do it. Yeah. I'm not saying that I have what it takes to accomplish that, but I'm telling you right the fuck now, I have what it takes to try. Yeah. I'm that I love fucking that attitude, dumb. Right? It's I'm, a that, lion I'm that fucking dumb that I'll try. <laughs> Yeah, I'll try. I'll, I'll try and be it, the first. It, you tell me I got a one percent success rate. I can take that. So yeah, you're saying awesome. that can because 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 the one percent is the one percent, man. So it's gonna and happen. And I'm already to yeah. and like as like getting shot, get like being combat wounded in Iraq. You're one percent of one percent. You know, yeah. It, it, it is like one percent of the fucking army is fucking combat arms. 
1% of them fucking sees combat. 1% of them gets wounded in combat. Right. Like, I will take 1% odds. Right. Well, I think Give you, me my fucking 1%. Dude, I think that's a that's a ballsy, like a ballsy <laughs> thing that can stupid, translate to other parts stupid, of life too, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> yeah. why can't I make a living off of Instagram mm-hmm. or podcasting? Like, mm-hmm. dude, 1% is going to be able to do that, right? Why not? But yeah. you're like... Fuck it, I'll be that one yeah, percent, which is yeah. which is amazing. It's, it's it, badass. I, I didn't say I'd accomplish it. I said I would try. I'd try. Give me do. Give, and like give me That's a fair chance to try. Yeah. Give me a give me a shot. Yeah. If you do your part, I can try. If you don't do your part, I can't try. And they didn't do their part, so I wasn't able to try. wasn't even able to try. And now I got a that friend. Sucks. He's a fucking green beret. He fucking lost his leg, same as me. Right. And like he's a stud. Yeah. But I am equal. Yeah. And his physical capabilities, and he stayed on in his fucking ODA. But I, you know, but I, but like I, I remember I told the doctor I said, "Hey, I was like, hey, doc, so at some point somebody's gonna pass selection with an above knee amputation." Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, Has it happened yet? Not, 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 not to my not knowledge. knowledge. Happened to a ranger, didn't it? No, or like I'm saying, I haven't heard a story where somebody went through a selection process. I've heard stories of somebody was uh, already in. Okay. And and like maybe baloney, but like so you know the baloney amputees? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know if this guy I can't I don't know his name. I I've seen a picture of him and I remember hearing a story of he was he was a ranger, lost his leg, and he wanted to stay at battalion and they just made him go through ranger school again and they're like, Hey, if you can pass then really? and, and he fucking did. No. Yeah. Nice. But, yeah. You know, but you know, so it's just oh, like you know, name? but it was like my my my. I got a good friend. He's fucking awesome, man. He's a stud. He's a he's an above knee stud. But you know what? So am I. Exactly. I think, and I'm not I'm not pumping myself up here or something like that. But that's you the guys, mindset. You guys man. know I don't like me too much, but like, <laughs> but, right? But like, you know, <laughs> but, but, but like, a, you know, it's like, come on, motherfuckers, give yeah. me. So like, at no point in the hospital did I lose focus, and the like the bad news was coming in, and I'm. I'm sure I like wanted to smash shit or something like that. Yeah. You know, or I was like, I, I was just pissed that I wasn't in the fight. Yeah. I wasn't upset that my, fr- or I wasn't, um, I didn't lose my shit cause my friend died. And I had like, I had a couple of friends die over there, but I had, I had, I had one really good friend die while I was in the hospital. And, um, it was interesting. You know, the only time I lost my shit in the hospital um, bad news kept coming in, and actually that year a bridge collapsed in Minnesota, where I'm from. And like, right. my mom would take this bridge to work and stuff like that. And my yeah. mom was, she had the news on. I don't watch the fucking news. And she had the news on, and they were saying all this depressing shit. And I had all this depressing news coming in, and I was like, turn the, I was like, turn the fucking TV off. I can't, I can't yeah. deal with this, you know? Yeah. So no, I was, I never lost. Well, dude, I, I love. You know, having that attitude of like, why not me? You know, if there's a one percent chance, like, why why don't I give it a shot? Like, that's what I think can create greatness, or that's what I think can create something that's a legacy. So, like, every time I get in that fighter jet, like when I when the canopy would close down, whether it was an F fifteen E to go to combat or on the Thunderbirds, I was like, okay, this thing is a part of me now. Yeah. Why why would I ever even let the thought of like failure come into my mind? It never even came to you my mind. You don't even have time was, to fucking guess, right? Like, yeah, there's like that top <laughs> like, Top Gun quote, like you don't have time to think up there, like or you're dead. If you think you're dead or something like that, but yeah, I mean, it was it was like you close that clamshell, that thing comes down over top of you, and you're like, okay, I'm a part of this machine now. You're like, I will win. There's no other option. Um, and then I think the the art is like to be up there, have that attitude. I will win. Kind of like I mean. You're in the hospital that, beds that, that's, and you're that's win. deep. That mentality is deeply bred in your fighter pilot community. Yeah. And like you guys have a reputation yeah. for that. People are like, oh, they're just fucking cocky motherfucking at like you guys have a reputation for being cocky and well, I got thoughts on that cock strong too. and things like that. Yeah. Well, Even the females, whatever the female version sure. of a cock is. Yeah. Like, you like know? big <laughs> dick energy is that yeah. what it is? It's like you can <laughs> big big clit energy. Well, you know? whatever yeah. it is. I mean but, it's just yeah. a mindset of yeah. like I'm gonna win and yeah. like, you, any human you, can have that mindset. Yeah. You know like but I think this the art is like can you come down from that cockpit and be a good person yeah and be a good leader and be someone that people yeah. actually want to be around because we can train a drone is easy what's that the pompous shit is easy. it's easy man yeah, it's that, and, it, yeah. and it's like stereotypical like be yeah. be original like yeah. be someone that 
you can go kill the enemy. You can go slay the dragon, whatever that is. It could be in like business as well, you know, go do the work, but then be the person that people are like, ah, I want to have a beer with that guy. I want to learn from that guy. And then people will open up and like, they will learn from you. It's like a richer experience. Yeah. I think, I think people get caught up in the, you know, like the arrogance of being a fighter pilot or yeah. whatever, you know, being a badass in the army, whatever your Infantry, version of that is. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, you know, dude, I've been thinking a lot lately. Um, we're recording this. What's today's date? It's uh, it's June 5th. Everybody's aware of the current events and things like that. And yeah, uh, what, what you're saying is like cock strong. You're, you're in a fucking role of power, you know, but can you be a good person? Can you make the right decisions? Can you make difficult decisions? I'll tell you, I, I, like, right. here's a, here's a, a, an interesting story that I've been thinking a lot about lately. Or it's like, so, so I, I'm just going to say it. Like what happened? George Floyd, Minneapolis. That's where I'm from. That's where I'm from. Yeah. Like I'm from St. Paul. Yeah. And my mom lived right downtown Minneapolis. So like all that shit, that's right there. That's home. Um, what happened uh, with the cop um, is it just makes me it makes me think about a story when you're in a when you're in a position of power and authority like that can you keep your cool can right. you make the right decision can you make a like, good decision I like two instances two times when I was in Iraq now, this shit makes me think about you know so and I was a fucking I was a gung ho soldier I was there to kill I was there to yeah. fucking you know I was there to bring the fight. Um, uh, I was on a patrol one time. It was interesting. And I'm I'm 20 years old at this point, you yeah. know? So I'm just like, fuck, dude. There's a lot of responsibility to ask of a 20-year-old person to uh, do these things. We're on patrol. And uh, we're in the streets. And there's this fucking... We're, we're walking down this road. And I see, uh, there's like a really tall building. It's like an apartment complex or something. And up on the roof, all I see is someone in a fucking pullover vest that's tan... It's like a tactical hmm. type vest, a blue t-shirt, and they're pointing an AK down at the ground. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I'm calling it, I'm, I'm, I'm communicating. I'm like, I was like, you know, calling it out. Here's what I see. Yep. There's where it is. Yep. What the fuck is going on? Are these friendlies? What is this? Because in my head, it's like, we need to find out if that's Iraqi police right away. Right. Are they pointing down at Americans? What the fuck is going on? So yeah. I fucking throw my, I was a, I was a, I was a team leader at the time, but I was also carrying the saw because we were short manned. So, <laughs> Do they always give that to the smallest person? Is that not true? Every Every time. <laughs> okay. Dude. No, but <laughs> the, saw, the saw is the most casualty producing weapon yeah. in a in a rifle yeah. team. So it's like you got your team leader, you got your saw gunner, you fucking protect that motherfucker. But so I was carrying the saw, and I was just like, you know, I was a, I was I was a uh, big into physical fitness and yeah. things like that. I could handle it, you know. Yeah. Um, so I throw, I remember, I remember seeing this and I fucking throw my saw down on a door of the Humvee and I got my ACOG zoomed in on this person, this thing on the roof. And all I see real quick is a reflection on the AK, the wood part. I see a reflection hmm. and I was like, wait, sun doesn't reflect or like wood doesn't reflect sun like that. Right. Something's off. Hmm. And I didn't shoot. You know, and like, you know, I it was like, something's Used off. Used your judgment. Something's yeah. off. And, and they're like, and, and it was kind of coming up. I was like, wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? I was yeah. like, something's off. Something's fucking off. Right. Okay. I saw a reflection. Something's off. Mm -hmm. and we went and, uh, and you know what? That was a time I didn't shoot where I could have shot. Yeah. You, you, you could have. You were within <laughs> I, your right. I, I could have shot, you know? Yeah. And we didn't shoot. And we ended up, um, we fucking, Search that whole fucking building. It was huge. It was room to room. And we finally found this fucking vest. I was like, that's the one. Mm -hmm. And then we searched this whole house and it was hidden. It was a toy AK-47. Wow, it was like dude. a six-year-old kid. Some kid. But from far away, yeah. you can't tell the height of a yeah. person or something right. like that. Mm -hmm. You know? Imagine like, having to live with yourself. Yeah. For, you know, yeah, that's yeah. hard. That's yeah, hard. So I, mean, I was like, it was, tough position. It, was, it was that quick. It was like yeah. something shining. Yeah, the, the wood doesn't shine like that. Yeah. I see the reflection of the sun, but well, it's using so, discretion, man. And the, and then then it's like, but it's 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 being violent but giving a shit. Yes, it's being violent but giving a shit. It's like, yeah, I have the power to kill you right now, but I'm right. gonna fucking make sure that before I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you have the restraint to do what's gonna make the best result in the end, right? Mm -hmm. 
like a similar story to that real quick is I was in a, a tick in Afghanistan, the troops in contact situation of the day was these guys are running into a mosque, running back out and back in and back out. They're part of the Taliban and, and this JTAC wanted this joint terminal air controller things, what that stands for, mm-hmm. wanted this guy to go away. Yeah. So we're overhead and we're circling around and he says, you know, we're, as soon as this guy comes out, he's going to pop out for a second and make a phone call. We want to, we want you to come in and strafe him as soon as he comes out of this, this mosque. Okay. And then, and then, you know, we're going to get rid of this one threat. And so as we're circling around, it's like the midday. So people start coming into the square because the mosque is kind of attached to the town square. So this town square starts flooding with people. Jesus. Yeah. And you so you strafe the... Well, it, the situation was developing. Okay. So there wasn't that many people in the town square when he, we first got called in and we're kind of watching, we're doing overwatch. And we have this pod that, this pod's got great visuals on it. Like you can right. see the size of people. You can see what's going on. And I started to notice like there's a soccer game going on. A, st- a soccer game started up in that town square. And yeah, this one guy's going in and out making his phone calls, right? Uh, clearly like a bad dude that needs to go away. And I would have no qualms doing that, but I started to see the soccer game develop and I see like in our pod that we can see people like you see like heat signatures and I'm like, okay, (laughs) all these people playing soccer are half the size of the other people. These are kids playing a soccer game. So then we get cleared hot to come in for a strafe and it needs to happen quick because this guy pops out. And at that moment, it was that same moment that you had. I was like, something's not right here. So I relayed that information to this JTAC. I'm like, look, there's a soccer game going on. Does the ground force commander know, like, is that a risk that is willing to be taken to take out one guy and destroy a village and destroy our reputation? Uh, I'm, I'm literally saying this stuff over the radio. Right. I'm sure this JTAC hated me at the time, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. But I was like, look, man, like, I don't think you know exactly what's happening. And this is my opportunity to use discretion yeah. to save all of us from doing something that not only is going to make us not sleep for the rest of our lives, but that's not going to progress the objective right you know and so i said no we're not doing it and that was a big controversy for a while but you know i stood in front of uh, that jtac later you know i had a conversation with them usually it doesn't happen but this was kind of a bit of a controversial issue and i told him and he was like dude thank you like i didn't know he's like i couldn't see exactly what was going on He said thank you he said thank you but he was pissed before that yeah. Um, but eventually well, he said, thank you. He was yeah. a good dude. He just didn't have all the information. Yeah. And so when, when good people don't say yeah. something or don't bring up the fact that something's off, bad things can happen. So you spoke up in your situation, but then these other three cops standing around George Floyd, dude, they, I'm not trying to call them out. I don't know what the context was, but they yeah. didn't speak up. Right. And this clearly or, was a bad cop who yeah. was doing yeah. this. I mean, it's obvious. Or my, my, my point of relating the two stories is, if I can handle that level of responsibility at 20 years old, yeah, it's, yep. not, it's not too yeah. much. It's not too much to ask. Not at all. If dude. you're in that, in the, if you're in, if you sign up, if you're in that position, that's the level of level of responsibility that you decide to take on. And it's fucking, it's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. Also, it is, way. but it's, how, you how should, many people in the army or military in general have made bad calls like that and are in fucking yeah. jail. Yeah. Right. And, yeah, and so and yeah. this is what I'm saying is like when when you when you know the um when you start to give a shit, yeah, you're able to, you're able to make calls like that, and it, and it yeah. happened two more times. I'll tell you like quick story. Yeah. It's like we were fucking out in trucks at night, you know, doing a presence patrol in Humvees, and you can't drive a car down the streets at night if you're an an Iraqi um, national there, you know. But there was a car racing. Racing, 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 racing. And the gunners wanted to shoot and stuff like that. And 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 somebody ended up not shooting. Turns out this mother like this this guy was rushing his pregnant wife to a hospital. Oh, dude. And right. it was it was coming over the radio. Everybody wanted to fucking shoot. I think it's a everybody, everybody wanted to fucking yeah. shoot. It's just these weird scenarios. Yeah. Sure. Like these are like anomalies. Like, like, yeah, we're just, yeah. you know. It's just but like that's you judgment. Well, and being being able to think fast and and understand yeah. and give a shit about people like what you said you're like yeah. man I don't know, you well, know let me ask you this how many medals did you get for that I, <laughs> for I, using got, discretion. I got I got for one using, I got one medal in the military a fucking purple heart yeah <laughs> you know yeah. so maybe there's maybe there's a conversation that needs to be had of 
you know, when you see someone use discretion, when you see someone advance the bigger objectives, you know, why is there not more of a, hey man, great job, you know, to reinforce that to your average everyday fighter pilot or your average everyday infantry. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, the, like a medal for the bomb you didn't drop. Like I'm all yeah. for, I'm all for dropping bombs oh, when too. it needs yeah, to be done. But, to but protect. sometimes shit happens and I'll, uh, like one more story. Like, yeah. Here's, here's a weird one because it was a situation when I shouldn't have shot a guy but I should have shot the guy, which is wow. Fucking, I can't wait to hear this one. So it's 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 weird. Like we were we were doing these warehouse raids. I can't I can't remember I can't who we were working with or for or something like that. But we were raiding these warehouses and I went into a warehouse and I was the assault team leader, so I was always the first guy in. So I went into this like warehouse and it was like this huge open area, and directly to the left was a hallway. And down the hallway, there was like three rooms. Yeah. You know? So as soon as we got in, a guy comes running out of the first room and he's running all the way down this hallway. And I'm, and he's unarmed, but he's running down this hallway. And I'm like, stop, <laughs> stop, fucking yeah. motherfucker, stop. In my head, it's like I'm leading my team. This guy's gonna fucking go to the last room, grab a fucking AK, hunker down in the corner, blast us as right. we're fucking coming right. in the room. Yeah. You know? I. Sure. Should have. I should have shot that guy, but I didn't shoot that guy. But I, you know, like we ran into the, I ran into the last room and he was, he ran into the last room and he was just kind of like, you know, squatting on the floor. I, I fucking kicked him in the head. I kicked him down, yeah. you know, cause I was like, motherfucker, you know, yeah. there's this weird thing, man, discretion. And, yeah. but it, but it's all Thinking. like my point of in, in sharing these things is like, I grew up. I grew up on that third deployment. Yeah. I cared about people. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's yeah. huge, man. Some people never like do that. Empathy, compassion, understanding yeah. someone else's position yeah. uh, in the world. Like, that, that, like, turns out that guy was just fucking probably startled, scared as fuck. Scared as fuck. Right. Scared the Americans as are fuck. rolling up in his warehouse. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's a perspective that, you know, it, it, like, is rare. But the people that do it, that have that perspective, they usually end up better in the end. Mm -hmm. You know? So their businesses usually succeed, their families, you know, they have a, a life that they're actually excited about. Real empathy you know? and real compassion and not just saying the bullshit words or yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's difficult and it takes practice to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Like yeah. when I got shot, I had to make peace with the incident, you know? Yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even mad at the guy who shot me. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, I would shoot somebody personal. who's trying to break into my house, yeah. you know? Sure. Or, or like whatever he was fighting for, whatever the fuck like that. I don't care. But yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, man. I mean, talk about sort of growing up. Yeah. That, I mean, know? I think that the, you know, we're, we're fortunate that we kind of, you know, had the military to teach us that lesson, you know? And yeah. it's, you know, having seen death and having witnessed the things we've seen, I wouldn't trade it. And, you know, I, dude, you've been through hell and back you know but you've you're a stronger person for it it sounds like yeah. and a lot of people don't have that opportunity to go put their lives on the line or go just like surf yeah, it so doesn't have do to you, be your it doesn't have to be your life so just go surf yeah so so we're we're so we we are what we are because of our experiences but our experiences in this room right now are extreme you know sure fucking fighter pilot and you did it what you did and you you know you my friends dying and things like that in that job. You've been blown up. Yeah. You've been stabbed. Yeah. A couple times. Then fucking yeah. beat up. You like, you try to grab a glass door handle and your it bloody hand slipped didn't off. Didn't fucking work. Yeah. Jeez, and then I, dude. you know, what happened to me? Like, it's interesting. How do we fucking tell people to live that way without having to go through that? Do they have to well, go through that? Hopefully not, right? Because what, 1% of the population serves in the military or something like that? Like, I'm not trying to toot our own horns but like hopefully they don't have to that's the beauty of being in america or in a, a free country wherever you are it's the beauty of that is you don't have to even listen to things like this and you can create a version of that so i think you can get that through stuff other than other than um the near death you know i think if you are if if you are empathetic to people you can you can serve you can go to impoverished areas or 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 you know, serve in other countries and, and but first off is learning empathy. How how do you teach somebody to learn? Oh, empathy? I don't know. I don't know that. 
I think you, I think you gotta you be a part it. of something bigger than yourself. I think so. You gotta go be a part of something that you have is to have connection. not directly gonna make you rich or something like that. Like I join think, AmeriCorps. I like, think a lot of people <laughs> get that through through church and and through through mission. Um, you know, whatever they call them when they when they go and help people in Haiti and stuff like that. But I think I think there's a time in your life. In in the seventeen to nineteen to twenty, where you're where you're 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 breaking out from underneath the umbrella of your parents, or or you're you're starting out on your own life, and you're very impressionable to to how you are about to see the world. And when when you when you see something so drastic, it can have a huge impact. Some people it doesn't, and some people it just it goes right over their head. But I know when when I had like gone to Guatemala for it to to rebuild schools after hurricane ike like that was the first time i had ever seen like like true poverty and it changed me and i and i came yeah. back home and i just had a yeah. different perspective on everything I, I i think you can you can you can learn empathy just by hearing the words here's 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 what you do is like imagine somebody you really don't like that you totally disagree with mm -hmm. And try and understand how they got to that conclusion, and then respect them for it. It's yeah. a it's a weird thing. It's a yeah. super weird thing, you know. Like right, uh, uh, like uh, like oh, that makes sense. The truth usually makes sense. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, I think if if anybody has a strong perspective and then they can't say the other perspective, yeah, then they kind of lose all respect. Yeah, they probably they probably don't respect themselves. They're just repeating. They're repeating a a line sure so i think see the other side and know why the other argument exists that's a that's a step in the right direction it's interesting how this conversation got to that but that's what you know like that you know you you, uh, you're, you kind of your stories um made me think about growing up yeah and my growing yeah. up process and i know that um uh, being a part of the the thunderbirds team it was also a part of your job to go around and and speak and yeah. sort of incur like what, 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 and you would speak to high schools, right? It was or, mainly high schools. Yeah. yeah we go to community colleges. What did you, you say to them? Cause you're, you're trying to like about pump, that. Yeah. pump that up. Right. And yeah, you are. I mean, I think, I don't know. I think there's probably something that, that the, you know, you're supposed to say perhaps. Sure. Um, but I had a lot of life experiences at, at that point. Yeah. You know, I'd been to war, you know, I'd seen friends die. Mm -hmm. So I felt like if I just went and said, Hey, Join the Air Force, guys. Yeah. Like I'd be kind of missing an opportunity to be real yeah. uh, with with kids, and I feel like you know uh, I I like being around authentic people, and I think you know we all know that kids especially can sense when you're inauthentic, you know, quickly, very quickly. So can so can everyone, but everyone just kind of ignores it. I think, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. kids don't ignore it. <laughs> no. So I love that because it was kind of this you know, this test on me of like, Hey, be real, be authentic and you'll reach the right people and you won't reach the wrong people. And that's okay. Yeah. You don't have to reach everyone. Like not every, everyone doesn't have to like you. Ooh, that's a big, you know, you won't reach the wrong people. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't want to reach the wrong yeah. people, man. Like, <laughs> Can't reach them. Yeah. They're, they're fucking out of reach. Yeah, but it's true. But what, what, what would you say? Yeah. Cause you would try to encourage, basically your message was, one of encouragement and empowerment, right? So I had, I, I really thought through it. You know, I took some time and, and figured out what I wanted to relate based on my military experience and just, you know, what I learned in life so far. It was a really cool platform. So uh, first thing that I would usually start out with was, you know, I'm, I'm Neo. I'm the guy who's trying to break out of the matrix, but yet I'm in the Air Force. <laughs> I'm in the system, right? Yeah. But in order to change something and make something better, maybe you need to be in the system for a while and see how it works, see the inside of it, you know, see how the bells and whistles move and be able to manipulate those and move those towards something better. Yeah. Uh, and, and along with that was be creative. And so I would tell the story, story about Snapchat. Evan Siegel, I think is the guy's name. Anyway, he did like 34 iterations of an app. He's like, 33rd one was called i think it was like peekaboo or something like that and it was like a picture app that would like you know it was the basic the beginnings of snapchat mm -hmm. and his 34th iteration was snapchat so i'd be like hey who here has used peekaboo you know and like they'd be like who's what the hell, what are you talking about you know and i'd say the reason why you don't know what it's called is because the guy didn't quit and he tried one more time and he created snapchat 
So if you think you're going to get some, you're going to be famous overnight, you're going to build something that's going to make you world, you know, a millionaire, or you're going to change the world overnight. Even the guy who's running a billion dollar company now had to try 34 times and, and he failed 33 times. His 34th time he, he succeeded. So don't be disheartened by failure was my, was my big thing. And then the second thing was stop trying to be an influencer or whatever, put down that, put that down for 10 years Go build a cool story, and then you'll be an influencer who can impact people a thousand times more. Because yeah. you have a story that people actually want to listen to. Yeah. Like if you didn't join the army, well, no, and you didn't have that I, story I, behind you, dude. Like I'm not no offense. Like you're a great guy, yeah. but it makes your story that much more impactful. And I, I want to listen to you more. I want to, you know, you're influencing more people, not directly trying to, just because of the story that you have. That's real. So I, just, I was just, I was thinking about today. There's a poem. I, I shared this, I shared this story on Instagram today. Just see my Instagram post today. Yeah, I saw it. Was it. Like, so yeah, yeah, it was crazy, man. Like super yeah. cool, super cool. Life experience. Some guy, like a, like a restaurant yeah. or something showed it to you. That, uh, that poem is, is in this room somewhere. Um, yeah. To see a sermon, to see a sermon is this poem. I think we'll, we'll close it up here. We'll close it up with that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's like, um, uh, yeah, you have, you have to live first and then they're like, and now it's all about clout and influence and things like that. There's a poem it's called to see a sermon. And I, 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 the author escapes me. Um, but it, but it, yeah, yeah. It maybe look it up, but it goes, it starts. I, I remember, I'll tell you the story while Owen looks it up to see a sermon. I was, there was a, uh, an Italian food restaurant right outside Fort Bragg. And we, uh, me and my friends used to go there all the time uh, for chicken parm. It was pretty cheap. It was maybe like eleven or twelve bucks or something like that. But it was really fucking good. And I can't can't remember the name of this restaurant, um, which sucks. But um, when I went in two thousand eight, you know, I I had been shot. I was I was going through my shit, and I went, and my unit came home in two thousand eight. I got shot June two thousand seven, but my unit came home in two thousand eight, uh, March, and I went to go visit them. And out of like you know, nostalgia and that is what we did. We went to this Italian restaurant. So I went there to eat. Did you find that author? Is it, is it sermons we see? Yeah, actually. Yeah. By Ed, Edgar guest. Yes. Yeah. Sermons we see by Edgar's get Edgar, Ed, Edgar guest, Ed, Edgar. They say Edgar, Edgar, e, Edgar Sorry. guest sermons. We see by Edgar guests. Yeah. This is the poem. So I was at this Italian restaurant and uh dude this is like the weirdest fucking thing this is the weirdest fucking thing i don't know what this guy saw in me or something like that he was no shit like fucking in his 70s you know so i'm at this restaurant that i used to frequent I'm with my friends I'm, and you got to go up to pay and when i pay this guy stands up and he was sitting at a booth right by the fucking uh um cash register there he stands up and he just, I, I'm on a cane. I don't know. Like he knows, he knows something. And he know, like no shit grabs my soul, my shoulder. And he looks me dead in the eye and he starts reciting a fucking poem to me. Huh. Never said a word wow. to this guy in my fucking life. Yeah. And just starts reciting a fucking poem to me. And this guy said this whole goddamn poem off memory. Sermons We See by Edgar Guess. Um, and and it's, 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 he, just, he just starts out like this. I'd rather I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one would walk with me than merely tell the way. The eyes a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Find counsel is confusing, but examples always clear. And it goes on about that. Mm -hmm. Live your fucking life. I like that. Your message to these high school kids. Yeah. It's like, hey, live first. Mm -hmm. If if you live and do and you like experience and do right and try hard. Yeah, I hate when people call me a fucking influencer. I'm not a fucking influencer. I'm a lot of things. Yeah, I'm a lot of fucking things. I'm not a fucking influencer. If I have influence, it's because I live right. Exactly. And and I don't live right for influence. I live right for me. Right. Right. Will you for my kids, yeah. dude? For my wife, yeah, I, it's, it's a selfish thing. Right living is a selfish thing. I want to be happy with me. I want my kids to be proud of me. Yeah, I want my wife to love me. <laughs> you know, Dude, the influence you, fucking follows right. because some people need help, and like, right. and it, and it's just because there there was there was times along my path where I needed help, and people filled that role. 
you know. Well, you and gave back in your in in your way. It was the army. In other people's way, it could be something else. But you gave back. You gave something, and now you write your own ticket. Yeah. But it wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to write your own ticket with a clear conscience if you hadn't have given something first. Yeah. You know, or it wouldn't be as meaningful of a ticket. But now yeah. you got a, a badass ticket, dude. Yeah. Because of the story before that. That's that's why we um that's why we believe in service and things like you yeah. can't you can't really replicate replicate that no. service and and what comes with it you can't yeah. I hear I like some people like I have some friends who try to relate to me because they played pro hockey or pro football or semi pro baseball or something like that and they're like I get it I get the camaraderie <laughs> I get it <laughs> I'm like hey. No, you don't. Yeah. No offense. <laughs> no, you don't. Because when you, like, your fucking, what you did was life and death. And yeah. you saw life and death, you know? And, dude, being a fucking fighter pilot, I couldn't imagine that shit. Oh, no, I couldn't. You know? It. It's like you couldn't imagine being fucking Might boots be on the to. ground and kicking doors in or something like that. I couldn't. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> You start talking, dude. Squeeze in for the G's. Yeah, you start talking about the yeah. G's, and I'm like, you better nope. start practicing, man, because we're gonna do that paperwork for you. Yeah, can, can do it. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that. Um, I think that's gonna wrap it up for tonight, Ryan. I want you back. Yeah, man. Because um, um, this was this was a lot of fun. I'm glad we talked about everything we talked about today. But you have so much more. I do like you. I there's I, a part I, too. I, I really, I really like That's admire and respect the shit out of you because you, you, this, you. this is your military history. Yeah. But you've you you have a business and entrepreneur mindset that is just like something people should hear. Hmm. You've inspired me. You've you've taught me things. You're an optimistic, positive fucking guy. Thanks, yeah, man. you post and you post a lot of I don't know a lot how. of optimism and 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 uh, stuff. Thanks, bro. Online, appreciate yeah, I like that. it. And yeah, thank you. And, and 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 I couldn't be more opposite from you. I think. And that, but I, I but, see but, tones of similarities, but it's just presented in a different way. Yeah, but I'm like, man, you know? I really like. I was like, but, your confidence, not arrogance, hmm. is inspiring to me. I'm like, hey, it's okay to believe in yourself. Yeah, and want the best for everybody. <laughs> Everywhere, Absolutely, anyways. man. Yeah. People, people win so, when you believe in yourself. If you're coming yeah. from the right place, mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, so that's and, that's what I try to put out there. I mean, you've you've helped inspire me too. Even just if it's something simple like a little workout, you know that that helps moves me helps to move me forward. So cool, man. Thanks to you too, man. Yeah, I I want you back on because we got a whole nother fucking uh, uh, group of things to talk about. I want to talk about uh, business. Let's do it. Business and life. Where yeah. can where can people find you? Just uh, Instagram probably right now. So Ryan Bode one is me. Ryan Bode one. Yeah, check him out. Up. Hit me up. We'll chat. I DM follow him. He's like, you know, it's a good follow. Yeah, it's, it's totally. It's, it's That's just, what I'm saying. It's just positive. Positive shit. stuff. It's positive shit. Try to keep it real. Yeah. No, you you do that. You do a good job at that. I love seeing you. And I haven't seen you in a while because you're out doing your fucking job. And, yeah. Uh, hey, let's hang out more. Yeah. Thanks for joining <laughs> us today. Thanks Ryan, for having me, buddy. Time. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.